So guys what if Naruto God of Warriors bride and Sona as slave movie? Issei was happy, in just the past couple of weeks. His life had made a complete turnaround, he had been reincarnated as a devil and while dying wasn't something he enjoyed. He could say with certainty that he had never gotten over something faster than when he gained the knowledge that he now had a chance at creating a harem. He had awoken an ancient power that helped him take the life of the one who had ended his own and he was constantly surrounded by beautiful women causing his perverted brain to go crazy about what he would do with their breasts if any of them became his girlfriend, all in all, he couldn't see any possible way for the life he now had to ever fall apart. That is until Kuo Academy had a sudden transfer student. It started with just rumors, the new transfer student and Rias were walking together outside of school. Did you see the new guy? he's so handsome and if what Ika said was true, giggles. The new guy was in the student council's office for like, an hour or something, I wonder if he and the president know each other. Don't tell anyone I told you this, but the new guy and Gremory Sama were seen by someone in our school in the mall together. Rumors had always been something he had ignored, his previous notoriety as one of the worst members of the perverted trio had made it so that he had developed an ability to ignore them effortlessly and yet these were different, they had pierced through his metaphorical barrier rather effortlessly and led to Issei gaining his own suspicions, the one about his king's best friend only made him slightly curious before his focus went back to Rias. And rightfully so he would say to any that asked, the new transfer student as everyone was referring to him as was the exact kind of guy that Issei was usually intimidated by, only that was before he had gained the strength that he had now, and yet something still warned him about the guy, telling Issei that he should nt mess with him. Standing tall above his own average height, at least by Japanese standards, the transfer student or Naruto Uzumaki as he had introduced himself was in a league of his own, the closest comparison Issei could make for him would be to that of an American football linebacker, and even then he wasn't sure if that was a good enough representation of the mon's stature. Not to mention the way he was in school, even something as mundane as walking through the hallways made Issei feel like he was watching a shark on the prowl for his next meal what with the way the hallways cleared for him like a school of fishes avoiding an apex predator. Of course, many didn't like that but their false bravado was quickly put to rest without contest, those foolish enough to even try and get into fights with him were always stopped by members of the student council before anything could happen, Issei thought to himself that it was probably more for the antagonizer's protection rather than Naruto's. Now hearing that the two of them were seen together outside of school caused him a feeling of anxiety that he couldn't understand, the sole reason he hadn't done anything sooner was that there had been no evidence claiming what the rumors were saying was true, in school, the blonde and his king were as close as strangers, never seen together as some had said, and not once was there a moment where it seemed that the two shared any connection whatsoever. Make no mistake, it wasn't like Issei was a jealous individual, far from it, he knew people needed space, even if they were devils, it was just the fact that despite all the rumors going around, Rias had yet to bring it up to either him or any of his fellow peerage members, and that was driving him up the wall with apprehension. Why wouldn't she clear the air on this subject with her close friends, with him, her boyfriend, if there wasn't any truth to it all? Wouldn't that be the first thing someone should do? This combined with the fact that there had been this awkward air surrounding the members of the orc due to their king's random calls for rain checks for their meetings and he had decided that enough was enough. And so that is what leads us to what he was doing today, early in the morning so as to catch her before she was busy, he made his way to her apartment in order to confirm that his suspicions were just that, suspicions. Luckily it wasn't a long walk as she had chosen to live close to their school, allowing for him to be there and in front of her door in less than 20 minutes. Pressing the button that rang the doorbell, he awaited her response, yet after waiting for more than three minutes with no response, he pressed it again assuming that she had to be asleep or something as the last time he had been in her apartment, the doorbell had been extremely loud, but still, she didn't answer, and this time he had waited even longer, ten minutes to be exact. Irk, he groaned, rubbing his hand through his hair while he huffed in annoyance. Deciding that he had gone through all polite options should she be sleeping or otherwise, he stuck his hand in his pocket and brought out his phone, it was a new one that Rias had bought for him saying that it was a gift for being both her boyfriend and her precious pawn, a click of her contact later and he was listening to the tone as it began to ring. On the fifth ring, he was prepared to hang up and head back home as she was probably busy or occupied but the distinct sound of Rias' voice made him pause in his action. Issei? The voice that had filled many of his past fantasies resonated through his phone speakers, 
He noticed that her voice sounded hoarse as though she had just woken up and yet alongside it was the seductive undertone that had always made his pants tight whenever she spoke to him. What do you need that you had to call me this early in the morning? She groaned out, her words ending in a whine that Issei excused as her probably stretching her recently awakened body, just imagining her figure while she did so had him getting a little hot under the collar, that is until a random bout of embarrassment hit him as he processed her question. Just how childish would his reason for disturbing her rest sound to her, especially given that as they were devils, reincarnated or not, the subject of jealousy was a rather foolish topic to them, theirs was a mentality driven by power and prestige so things like envy, despite being one of their many believed sins, was something that the species as a whole considered beneath them. It was this that caused Issei to hesitate in replying to his king's question. Issei? He heard her say before her side went completely quiet though once more he thought nothing of it. Yay, um, I am outside your apartment right now, could you let me in, I think you were sleeping when I rang your doorbell, I want to talk to you about something, he began unsurely before finishing with what he thought was a strong voice. It took a little while, but after a minute of silence the white noise resumed from Ria's side, confirming that she had muted, but for what Issei wasn't sure. He wasn't allowed the time to think about it though as soon after, he heard the tell-tale sound of the phone being picked up and Ria's soft voice greeted his ears again. Sorry for that Issei, the redhead Gremory princess spoke, her voice breathy as though she had just done a 100 meter dash, he thought to question her on it but what she said next quashed that impulse, I am not home right now. I am at Sona's and had to run to the kitchen to turn off the stove, what did you want to talk about? That explains why she wouldn't have answered even with how loud the doorbell is, sighing at not being able to see her, Issei responded. Ah, well if you're at the president's house I wouldn't want to disturb you, this is something I wanted to talk to you in person about, he said as he began the walk back home, he would talk to her another day as ruining her day with Sona wasn't worth her listening to his jealous ramblings, she already was dealing with a lot as the heiress to her family. If you're sure, Issei heard her remorseful voice through the speaker. Ah, I know, she suddenly spoke up, her voice filled with enthusiasm. How about I cough go to your house tomorrow? A-A-N-N-N-D, we can discuss an appropriate apology for me not being there. How does that sound? Is that okay with you dear? She trailed off sultrily. Issei felt as though he could feel her breath through the phone. That's how erotic she sounded, and based on the feeling in his lower area, he could tell that his junior was feeling it too. Taking a deep breath in order to hide his excitement he replied, albeit she could tell through how fast he spoke. That's perfect. See you tomorrow then. Bye. He hung up without waiting for her to speak as he didn't want to embarrass himself and ruin what was to come if she heard how excited he was, the next day couldn't come any faster. While Issei was focusing on whether or not he should wear cologne the next day for when he met with Rias, the girl of the hour wasn't even thinking about the conversation they had only moments ago. Oh. Oh. Oh, 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 in fact, the crimson-haired young woman currently on her hands and knees on her own bed whose hips were being savagely hammered into couldn't think of anything but the blonde hunk of a man that Issei had been worried about, and while doing so, with what semblance of a mind that she had left, Rias couldn't help but think about how their relationship had started. As the heiress of the Gremory family, she had responsibilities, one of those responsibilities was the continuation of her bloodline and so it was decided between her parents and their close friends of the Uzumaki clan that when she became of age she would marry their son and help continue the bloodline of both the Uzumaki and the Gremory families. An activity they were currently participating in as the Uzumaki heir admired the way Rios' massive breasts and round ass bounced and jiggled from the power behind each of his thrusts, now that they were 18, it was only a matter of time before their marriage was announced to anyone that listened in the supernatural world. Of course, that would mean that Rias would have to break her pawn's heart in the process but he honestly wouldn't be surprised if the slut got off on that with how sadistic her queen was, there was no way you could be around someone like that for so long and not assimilate some of their quirks. Pressing down on the back of her head, he forced it down bringing her ass further into the air allowing him to penetrate even deeper into her cunt, the muffled squeals of pleasure that left her mouth as she bit down on the covers beneath her were music to his ears. Damn Rias you are tight. It was as though her cunt had been replaced with a vice, that's how strongly she was gripping him, only because of his immense strength could he keep drilling into her velvet tunnel without pause as he felt that if it was normal human in his place they would have been down an appendage at this point. Was that your boyfriend on the phone? He sounded worried about you and yet here you are taking my dick. He angrily growled, 
pressing the head of his cock against her cervix and pulling her head back by her hair as the overstimulated red head grasped at the sheets in desperation. You dirty, cheating, whore. Rias cried tears of pleasure as she gasped and moaned while staring into Naruto's eyes from where he was now holding her up. No, I am not a cheater, I love him, she denied pitifully, her pussy getting even tighter at his accusation. Smack Rias jumped at having her ass slapped, a red mark of his open palm already forming on her meaty ass cheek as she continued to get railed by the powerful blonde, the bed beneath them was creaking and shaking from the strength behind their lovemaking. Why are you getting tighter than you little slut? Do you like the idea of being ed by someone other than your boyfriend? You enjoy being stolen away from him huh, don't you? Smack answer me slut, he yelled in a tone that allowed no defiance. Yes. I love it. I love it when you me. I love the thought of a big, strong, man, like you stealing me away from my boyfriend. I love the thought that you've ruined me for anyone but yourself as you rearrange my insides. Please keep ing me. Don't stop, don't stop, please, she begged. Naruto groaned deeply at that. Her erotic rambling caused him to nearly lose all sense of restraint as he reached around and grabbed her by the throat, gripping it tight enough to just barely feel like he was choking her before he proceeded to do just as she asked and lay it into her, hard. Using his hold on her neck, Naruto rammed into her plump ass cheeks powerfully, his colossal cock scraping against her cunt walls in such a way that she felt tingles from her womb all the way up to her brain. Just look at the way those fat tits shake. I bet I could you in front of him right now and you wouldn't even care, he mocked her. You can take me in front of his whole family for all I care, just keep ing me, she said before moaning as Naruto did a particularly hard thrust. It was as though her soul was being torn apart and put back together over and over with each collision, at this point, even if Rias knew that God was dead she would have assumed that Naruto was his reincarnation with how good he was ing her. Wet smacks resounded off the walls of his bedroom as Naruto slammed against the near comatose girl's hips, he ignored the feel of her legs kicking him in the behind as he continued to drive her towards a massive climax, his own nearing just as quickly. As the pressure in her core built up, coiling up like a spring, Rias cried out in ecstasy as Naruto reached under her and pinched her clit, bringing her to an unexpected orgasm. Ooh my why 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 goo coming, I am coming, she wailed her pussy experiencing orgasm after orgasm as it was bullied by her lover's cock, the bed getting soaked in femcum, and her pussy tightening to extreme levels as she unconsciously tried to bring her lover to climax with her. The sound of Naruto groaning atop her as he planted his hips against her, filling her insides with his steaming hot load showed her success as her eyes rolled up into her head and her body went limp as the pleasure overload caused her mind to finally shut down, her consciousness fading as she entered a blissful rest. Naruto groaned as he pulled out of the U ally comatose girl before rolling over and laying his body on the bed beside her. Just as he began to close his eyes and begin the process of falling asleep, however, a faint noise near the foot of Rias' bed caused him to stop, it sounded wet and rhythmic and when he got up to see what it was, he was greeted by the sight of his wife-to-be's queen masturbating with her eyes closed and her head tilted back while quiet breathy moans left her mouth every now and then. Smiling as he realized that the night was far from over, Naruto made his way to where Akino was now watching him approach. The first time she had heard about the engagement, Akino saw firsthand the sheer outrage Rias had felt towards it. On that day, the busty queen of the Gremory heiress did not believe that there was any other being that could match her king's anger, but Akino could understand where Rias was coming from, at least to a degree. To go from having the freedom to do whatever she wanted, whether that be something little like watching anime or something great like going to school in the human world, to then being told that she wouldn't have the freedom to choose her life partner, someone who most girls dream of finding on their own, then reasonably so, Rias had been pissed. Akino still remembered the nights she would spend at the girl's house comforting her as she cried about how she was nothing more than an object whose value depended on how much she benefited her family, how Rias' family saw her as nothing more than the Gremory heiress and not Rias herself. A part of Akino thought she was overreacting, but the other simply told her that supporting her friend despite her thoughts on the matter was what Rias needed most at the time, if Akino told her what she thought, Rias may have seen it as her taking Rias' family's side instead of her just giving advice from one friend to another. What surprised Akino the most was what she could only call a move of desperation from her king, they had recruited a pawn, a perverted boy by the name of Issei Hiodo, but that wasn't the surprising part, no, the surprise came from how, 
Not even a week after he had been reincarnated Rias announced that the two were dating. She had questioned her on how it had happened and the suspiciously hurried responses had only confirmed what Akino thought. Issei was an unknowing pawn, funny really, in Rias' gambit to free herself from her marriage. He was a cute boy, and if she could ignore his rampant perversion Akino could maybe even say that he had a good personality, so she felt sort of bad for him because he was being unknowingly led on, but really besides that Akino couldn't care less about him beyond his status as a fellow member of Rias' peerage. Of course, when in her defiance Rias had decided, quite stupidly Akino might add, to tell her family that she was in a relationship with the said pawn, it was no surprise that they did not like this news and did something that Rias did not expect at all, they decided to expedite the marriage by having Naruto move in with Rias in the human world. At this news, Rias had been devastated and locked herself in her room, no one, not even her boyfriend or her queen could get her to leave, still, on the day of his arrival, Rias was forced to greet him so on that day she had asked Akino to be present, to at least give her somebody to lean on metaphorically while she went through this whole ordeal. Akino had secretly been pleased when she first got sight of her king's fiancé. Both she and Rias were well above the average height of women in Japan and yet, standing in front of Naruto Uzumaki made it feel like she was a small child looking up at an adult, that was without mentioning his broad shoulders and muscular frame that made her feel like, if he wanted to, Right there while they were showing him around the apartment, he could pick her up like she weighed nothing, pin her against the wall, and have his wicked way with her, and she didn't even know if she would be against it. Then there were his eyes, two blue orbs that looked like they were shining with power and all throughout the short tour were unashamedly watching the two of them as they walked in front of him, even now, she could remember the feeling of his eyes undressing her whenever they were in the same room, unexpectedly Rias too, despite her anger had felt the same way if the blush Akino saw on her face back then meant anything. But back to Naruto, Akino felt that everything about him screamed the word man to her, not just how he looked but how he acted, and if she was being honest, he checked off every box in her criteria for what she wanted in a romantic partner. The only reason she hadn't done anything to act on that was that she both respected the fact that he was engaged to her best friend and she was too busy supporting Rias in her stressful time. That didn't stop her from checking out the Uzumaki air whenever she had a chance though. Akino could settle for eye candy, at least, for now. But something had changed, you see. Whenever Akino went over to Rias' apartment she was always prepared to hear at least a couple complaints about Naruto. They would be little things that even Rias herself was guilty of. Sleeping in on the weekends got Naruto called lazy. If he ate an extra portion of food he was immediately a glutton. However the most common complaint from Rias was that he was a pervert with how he would watch her like a predator watches his prey, that was probably the only one out of all the other unnamed complaints that Akino couldn't refute, he truly did have a predator's gaze. But recently something was different, almost like Rias' attitude towards her blonde fiancé's every action had completely disappeared. One day, Akino had gone over prepared to listen to another hour-long rant on why Rias hated Naruto but instead of any of that, the two of them had just done what they used to do before he had arrived, they watched anime, talked about life, and laughed together like normal, it was just like old times, and even if Akino felt great about that fact she couldn't help but be curious as to how this night-to-day change in her friend had occurred. The one thing that was most curious though, was Rios' response to being asked up front about it, her face would flush to a color that nearly matched her hairs and she would stutter out an excuse before quickly changing the topic. And while to Rias it may have seemed like she was being stealthy about it, Akino could see the times when the redhead would shyly glance at Naruto whenever he was in the same room as them before looking away with a slight blush on her face. Now Akino wasn't stupid, all of these things added up to a pretty clear picture of what was going on, the only thing was that she had no evidence to support her ideas, that is, until recently. Visiting Rias' apartment as she always did whenever they didn't have classes for the day, Akino decided to walk and enjoy the feeling of the outside air during her commute rather than use her magic and teleport like she always did, she was dressed in a simple yet stylish red dress that hugged her curves but still complemented her refined Yamato Nadashiko look without being too seductive and being the natural beauty that she was, there was minimal, if any at all, makeup on her face. Once she arrived and was about to ring the doorbell, she paused as she remembered that she had a key that Rias had given her when they first arrived in the human world and so she used it to let herself in. With her shoes replaced with her indoor ones, Akino was curious where Rias was because she hadn't come to greet her like she usually did, checking the time on her phone showed that despite how late it was, she should be up and they had even texted earlier, 
which is where Akino had told Rias she would be coming over. So where was she? And where was Naruto? She couldn't remember a time when she had come over and he wasn't there as well. Searching the first floor proved useless since they weren't in the living room or the kitchen, the dining room was empty, and the large balcony attached to the building was vacant of anyone, she was about to move to the second when she heard it. Surprised for a moment, Akino focused her senses to confirm that it was what she thought it was, and when she did so, her face showed her surprise because what she was hearing was something she never expected to hear at Rias' apartment, they were the sounds of extremely passionate. Feminine moans and groans that she felt were better described as that of a beast's resounded throughout the large apartment's second floor, they echoed through the halls and made it difficult for Akino to find their source but when she did, the young woman idly noted that the sounds were coming from behind Rias' door. Luckily, depending on who was asked, there was a slight crack in the door where she could look through. A blush of excitement and mild lust painted Akino's cheeks as the sounds came through with much more clarity now that she was right against their source, while she couldn't see what was happening because she hadn't yet looked through, she could still imagine what the sight of the two of them looked like as they engaged in hard, passionate ing from the sounds of their pleasure-filled moans and groans. Akino then took a deep breath and decided to just get it over with. Peeking through the small crack in the door, she covered her mouth to silence her gasp at the intoxicating sight beyond it. While she had expected it, watching her friend live in the act was much more stimulating than she originally had thought it would be, and given the fact that she and Naruto were drenched in sweat, they must be been at it for quite a bit before she found them, she already felt her lace panties becoming damp at the sight and knew that soon enough they would be soaked through completely with her arousal. And who could blame her? The sight of Rias being plowed from behind while her face was completely flush with arousal was far too erotic for anyone to not be at least slightly turned on from it. The way the Rios buxom figure would bounce and shake enticingly as each collision of the two's hips jostled her forward. The way muscular blonde would growl out commands and Rias would hurriedly comply. The way that she would shove her face into the covers and bite down on them in hopes that it would muffle her moans, only for one of Naruto's burly arms to use her hair like a horse's reins to pull her back up, forcing her cries of pleasure to resound out against the bedroom's walls while he yelled obscenities at her. Akino flinched when the large blonde slapped Rias on each of her round ass cheeks, one after the other, watching as their already red color from all the abuse they've taken turn an even deeper shade and unconsciously rubbing her own butt while imagining what it must be like to be in Rias' place only to shiver lightly from the sudden jolt of pleasure she got from her lower lips at the image. Would he take her the same way he was taking Rias, like an animal in the wild mounting its mate? Would he even be able to handle her the same way he did Rias? Of course, he would, even though Akino prided herself on being much more shapely than her king with her larger assets out of the two. Shed seen firsthand how massive he was, both in stature and below the belt, how rugged his hands were, probably from all the fights and training he's done in his life, just thinking about how his calloused palms would feel as they dug into her hips, holding her smaller form still beneath him while he edged her into a stuttering and shaking mess caused her now dripping arousal to flow down the inside of her thigh like a small stream. Akino watched and listened as Naruto made her king say things she would never expect her to, it tingled the sadistic part of her brain, witnessing the moment he got Rias to completely stop caring about her newly reincarnated pawn and boyfriend and beg him to just keep ing her and it also pleased the masochist part of it as she watched him continue to lay abuse into Rias' already worn body. The two had already been ing with an intensity that had Akino quite worried for the well-being of the Gremory heiress yet as she saw Naruto grit his teeth and suck in air while increasing the ferocity of his pillaging of Rias insides. She knew that the hardest had yet to come for the near comatose redhead. Luckily for her king, as the combined liquids of Naruto's precum and Rias' pussy juice flew from their connection and the blonde's hips began to look like a blur as they bashed against Rias' derriere the sound of Rias screaming in orgasm followed by Naruto's deep groan as he audibly cream-pied the Gremory clan's heiress without a care in the world for the consequences. Filling her body with his thick and steamy load, reverberated out in the spacious bedroom before all that Akino could hear was the sound of their heavy, exhausted breathing along with her own racing heart thundering in her chest and equally fast breathing. Watching as Rias fell into unconsciousness while Naruto slid his now semi-hard cock out of her cum-dripping snatch and fell off to the side of her. Akino realized with minor trepidation that sometime while she watched Naruto and Rias in their lovemaking, she had automatically moved to the foot of Rias' bed to get a closer look. Add into that that she was on the verge of orgasming as well since Shed been idly playing with herself while she watched the lewd sight and Akino knew that Shed messed up. 
Akino cursed mentally as she moaned involuntarily but some part of her was excited when it caught Naruto's attention. She continued to touch herself while under his careful watch, speeding up as her pleasure began to reach its peak but just before she fell over the edge, Naruto raised his palm off the bed and into the air. Momentary confusion filled Akino's being for a moment before the hairs on her body stood on end when she realized that she had understood what he wanted and stopped herself pleasuring without even realizing. Naruto was now laying down, his arms propped up underneath him while he looked down at Akino with a grin on his face at her reaction, she was his, she just didn't know it yet. Naruto wasn't oblivious to all those looks she would give him, the ones that he could tell meant something much more salacious than just curiosity. Now while he hadn't expected their relationship to go beyond that of acquaintances, at least until much later, the Uzumaki heir couldn't find it in himself to complain now that the chance had presented itself. Well, don't tell me you don't know what to do next, Naruto said while motioning to his now fully engorged dick. Naruto laughed when he saw Akino's face light up before she excitedly began to climb on the bed up to where he lay beside her king. Grasping at his member, Akino paused as he groaned above from the sensitivity that came from the marathon of he had just indulged in with Rias. After she realized it wasn't because she had done something wrong she marveled at its size while moving it this way and that. Akino felt pride enter her mind as she saw how swollen Naruto's dick was and her bare pantyless crotch area began to feel even more sticky than it already did. Ah! Naruto groaned once more from above her when she began to stroke his dick, her movements while unrefined and to Akino's embarrassment basically telling of her status as a virgin, were enough to get the blonde Uzumaki going. She had once heard from some of the boys at her school that because of her promiscuous personality, they thought Akino was easy, they believed that she was a slut and if you just talked her up for a bit, maybe add in a cheap date or something, that she would give it up for them, what they didn't know is that Akino was rather the complete opposite of that, she hadn't even kissed a boy yet, let alone have with one. Despite that, as she found herself kissing and licking at Naruto's immense length, smearing it with her expensive lipstick and tasting the residual flavor of Rias and his copulation, Akino couldn't help but wonder if some part of what they had said about her was true. But like a deity answering his followers' prayers, Naruto placed his palm atop her head, helping her understand it wasn't that what those children said was true, no, the only one who Akino would ever act like the debased slut that she was acting like now for was Naruto Uzumaki. No other man could ever stack up to him even if they tried their hardest. A stray thought entered her mind as she began to slow down her movements to concentrate. Could the reason for her powerful attraction, the reason in which Rias fell for his charms as well, be something to do with his Uzumaki heritage? But before Akino could fully delve her mind on this idea Naruto's palm that was still on the back of her head urged her to continue her ministrations and just like that her idea and her worries were forgotten in the face of his massive cock. What she didn't know was that she was closer to the truth than she thought. The only thing wrong was that it was solely because of Naruto's heritage. His blood did help some, but it was mostly all him. It's common knowledge that supernatural beings are attracted to those with power. Naruto just so happens to have a large abundance and that's why it was so easy for him to get them into his bed. At only the age of 18, he had already been declared as one of, if not, the strongest of his clan ever since he had defeated his mother in single combat whose power was of ultimate class. That added into his attractiveness was why Akino, a devil of significantly lower power was feverishly slobbering over his hard and throbbing cock, she worshipped it like it was her deity, and to Akino, the towering shaft might as well have been. Looking up into Naruto's eyes, she sucked and slurped at its veiny underside while slowly moving up from his balls to the tip, getting an appreciative growl from Naruto. Moving back down to his balls, Akino admired their size that was comparable to oranges and inhaled his intoxicating manly musk that made her feel lightheaded, licking one at a time, she slathered them in her saliva before sucking the left one into her mouth first and playing with it for a bit and then doing the same with the right causing deep shudders to run throughout Naruto's body. Once she was satisfied that she had done enough, Akino released his balls with one last obscene slurp then moved up from his crotch to start peppering kisses on his perfectly defined abs, Raising one of her hands she looked Naruto in the eyes and spat in her palm, using it to sloppily stroke his dick. Do you like that Naruto-sama? Akino moaned out breathily while maintaining eye contact, using her free hand she reached under his dick and began to fondle his balls once more. I hope you saved some for me in these big boys, she said and leaned down and laid chaste kisses on the side of his cock. Naruto groaned, ha, don't worry, I'll always have plenty for you sluts to enjoy, now get back to it. 
giggling into his crotch while she nuzzle against the base of his dick. Akino straightened up and gave him a mock salute. Sir, yes sir, I can't wait to taste yo. Her eyes widened as she felt him use the grip he had once more gained on the back of her head to force Akino down onto his cock, apparently done with waiting on her, glue or RKK. Her eyes teared up from the sudden deep throat and she gagged from the painful feeling in her throat though instead of displeasure from the pain at the rough treatment, Akino's eyes rolled up into the back of her head as she moaned and came with his dick lodged down her throat. Naruto grunted from the feeling of her throat constricting around his cock and then chuckled at the fact she had come from that, he knew based on how she acted that Akino was a natural submissive, at least for him, but to learn that she was also a masochist due to the way she came from the pain was a nice bonus. Groaning again, he let go of her hair, put his arms behind his head, and spoke, his voice deep and raspy from arousal, that's good, make sure you get all of it. She had been released and still, she kept forcing herself all the way to the base every time she went down his dick, sinful wet noises filled the room as she sucked, slurped, and gagged herself on Naruto's dick, moaning as she stayed pressed against his crotch. Akino stuck her tongue out and slurped at his balls that were now messy with a mixture of saliva and precum. Akino couldn't remember a time where she had ever been this aroused. Her nipples were hard as diamonds and pleasant sensations were coming from them as they rubbed against the bedsheets, her vagina, neglected for the cock that she was currently worshipping, was flowing with juices like a waterfall, and her mind felt like it was constantly on cloud nine, floating above even the angels of heaven's domain, though that could just be the oxygen deprivation. GLUUHK, GLUUHK, Gluuk. Tears coated in mascara ran down the sides of Akino's now red face while she furiously bobbed her head up and down Naruto's shaft. A chain of miniature orgasms ran through her body as the sensations she was feeling compounded on one another causing her bursts of extreme pleasure but never reaching the apex of her release, and speaking of release. Ah shit. Here it comes. Naruto groaned gutturally. Make sure you swallow every drop. He placed a hand in her hair that coaxed her to go faster. Doing so. Akino pursed her lips and created an airtight seal around the base of his dick, making sure that there was no other place for his seed to go but into her stomach, and continued to slam her head down on his crotch while his balls slapped against her chin, she felt his cock pulse while its girth swelled inside her throat, suffocating her, and she realized with slight worry that her earlier assumptions had been right. The sound of his nuts audibly churning out his ejaculation reached her ears while Naruto groaned above her its lewd crescendo warning her of the coming deluge of the thick, warm, and sticky payload he had stored, she had little trouble with swallowing the first few spurts as they were poured straight down her throat and admittedly tasted rather pleasant, it was only when the volume increased to match his cock's prodigious size that it started to become too much for her to handle. The ravenette beauty fell back off of Naruto's still ejaculating dick. Coughing into her hand and gasping for air since some of his cum had unpleasantly gone back up and out her nose. When she was sure her nostrils were clear however she once more grabbed onto his dick but this time instead of sucking it down into her gullet Akino simply pointed it at herself and let the last bit of his heavy load fall all over her body. Lines of Naruto's thick and steamy cum painted her figure, creating a lewd painting on her large, voluminous tits and picturesque face, some even got into her hair and usually, Akino would be pissed at this fact but as she looked up at Naruto's pleased and sweaty face with a proud, dirty smile she couldn't find it in herself to be bothered at all. Holy shit, Akino, Naruto said after taking a deep breath, that was Grey Fuick. As he was breathing to calm down his racing heart after his nth ejaculation of the day, the bedroom was filled with the occasional wet slurp and moan as Akino scooped up some of the cum that had landed on her flawless skin and sucked it into her mouth messily, he was ready to get some rest as before this he and Rias had been ing for the past five hours or more but the feeling of something wet and slippery on his sensitive head drew a curse from the muscular blonde. A glance at his crotch showed him that she had finished lapping up all of the semen that landed on her body and was now in the process of cleaning up the source. Akino's tongue once more bathed his shaft in her saliva as she went from the head of his dick down to the base and back up all while she loudly and obscenely gulped down the concoction of juices that coated his dick finishing up with a submissive kiss to his tip while her eyes were closed, Akino opened them, showing him that they were glazed over in want and untold amounts of lust. It was enough to get Naruto's blood flowing again and as his cock began to harden once more in preparation for the coming affair. He sat up and grabbed Akino by her waist to lift her up, she squealed delightfully and clutched onto his back with her arms around his neck when he effortlessly lifted her up and brought her back down on the bed, tits up, next to her sleeping king and himself 
Lovely vibrations rumbled from Naruto's chest and into her body giving her pleasant tingles as he chuckled at her still having some innocence even after all the indecent things they had done together. With her beside him, Naruto brought his hands up and began to toy with her body. First bringing one of his hands up to her lips where Akino began to suck on his finger as though it were his dick. Lutely slurping on the digit as she did her best to excite him even further, her endeavors proved successful as Naruto's other hand that had been idly groping her thick ass cheeks, moved to her front and began to squeeze and play with her massive tits, twisting her diamond hard nipples and sinking his palm into her voluminous breast meat while his other went down south and started toying with her swollen clit. Nyan. Akino moaned around his finger, her glossy eyes gazing up at him in reverence, she whined pitifully as Naruto removed his hand from her cunt stopping her pleasure but whimpered when he used the same hand to slap his Nawarok hardcock against her moist pussy lips. Naruto stared into Akino's eyes, enjoying the way she had yet to stop sucking on his thumb even with all the pleasure he could see she was feeling with how her body twitched and jumped at every one of his touches, you want this? He said as he dragged his dick up and down her cunt, listening to her muffled moans and cries. Akino nodded with his thumb now loosely hanging out of her mouth as the anticipation slowly began to become too much for her to handle. Naruto moved his hand back down to grope at her tits before shifting on the bed so he was now on top of her, his bulky body completely covering her smaller form. Do you want this big dick baby? Naruto whispered from above her before she looked up at his face and saw him smiling savagely, sending pleasurable shivers down her spine, nodding her head again, this time with noticeable enthusiasm. She looked down between their bodies where she could see his cock now resting against her pussy's entrance, its massive size making her wonder if she would even be able to take it all inside like her king before her. Before she could voice her worries, however, Naruto leaned forward even further and thrust mercilessly into Akino's sodden cunt, claiming her virginity for himself and groaning at the tight feeling of her velvet walls gripping and quivering against his rock-hard cock. Oofuk! Akino yelled out, her eyes rolling into the back of her head as she felt her walls stretch out to accommodate Naruto's immense girth, her head felt spacey and Akino wouldn't be surprised if she ended up slightly dehydrated after this as her body was racked with one continuous orgasm after the next, drenching Rias' bed and Naruto's crotch in her pussy juice. The Ravenette Queen thanked her previous self for breaking her hymen while masturbating with a rather large toy because she knew from the full body shivering way his cock stretched her out in the slight bulge she could see in her stomach that it would have been unpleasant otherwise. Her mouth opened in a silent scream as Naruto gave her no reprieve, already thrusting and grinding his dick into her aching cunt, her snug walls refusing to let go of his cock, eagerly sucking him back in whenever he brought his hips back. Umyy Satan. Just like that. Fuick, please don't stoop. Keep ing me. Please, please, please. She sobbed, her legs locking around his back and hips while her arms went around his neck and pressed herself completely against his, her ample breasts flattening against his chest. Now with his face close to her own, she began to lewdly lick and suck at his neck, trying her best to leave a hickey on his tough skin with loud and wet smacks. Who knew you and Rias would both be such sluts for my dick? He gave a harsh thrust at that. The feeling of her sucking on his neck up top along with her tight and hot pussy sucking on his dick down below invigorated the blonde. This girl was even wilder than Rias had been, and they'd only just started. The thought excited him, groping and slapping the still blissfully sleeping girl's ass beside them. Naruto laughed as Rias moaned in her sleep and even started to wiggle her behind unconsciously. Man but I feel bad for poor Issei, he seems like a good guy, once you get past all the other stuff. Naruto reached back and unwrapped her legs from around him while her arms fell away from his neck when he began to straighten up much to her confusion. I mean, it must suck you know? He said as he began to fold Akino's legs back till they were next to her head, forcing her to hold them in this compromising position. The busty queen's eyes widened when she realized what he was about to do from having seen it in videos she had watched. Being surrounded by so many beauties and yet he's still a virgin, it's like you guys wanted him to get cucked or something. I understand Rias, she's mine even if he didn't know that but what about you or any of those other sluts in her peerage? He asked her even as he climbed atop her, placing his large, powerful arms beside her head and leaning over her once more, this time with a sinister grin on his face and grinding his dick deep right where he knew she liked it. Nngn no. Issei's like a little brother to me. Ooh ooh, aaand Rias would never do that to him. She wailed, mentally preparing herself for the coming onslaught 
Her earlier realization had come too late and she could do nothing but hope her mind would remain intact after the blonde stud was done with her. Like a little brother. Damn, he's really going to cry now, Naruto laughed, but don't worry, after this, I doubt you'll even be able to remember his name, let alone worry about how he feels. With that said, Naruto drew back his hips until only the bulbous head of his dick was left inside of Akino's hot and steamy walls, then, with an almost animalistic roar, he slammed forward, burying every inch of his thick, hard, and throbbing man meat deep into the shuddering ravenette's tight and hot tunnel in a perverted mating press. Akino's eyes rolled into the back of her head as she was made victim to Naruto's merciless pounding, the position she was in giving the blonde free access to pile drive into her, jamming his dick in and out of her savagely. He listened as their connection made lewd, wet, slurps and sucks as her previously virgin cunt desperately clung to his member. Faster and faster, Naruto ed her sinful body into Rios' bed, her fat cow tits bouncing and hitting the bottom of her chin over and over as she screamed when she was hit with one toe curling orgasm after the other, still, the hulking blonde showed no mercy, his hips still blurring and his heavy bitch breaker still pummeling against Akino's insides even as she gasped for breath his orange-sized scrotum beating against her puckered asshole as felt the beginnings of his own release. Ooh shit. Here it comes, gonna fill you up. He groaned out above her, his thrusts becoming even more ferocious as he felt his nuts begin to tighten until finally, with one final piercing thrust, he planted his cock head against Akino's womb and let loose. She clearly felt as his first shot traveled through his dick. Its volume increasing his already monstrously thick cock's girth even further pressing it against her sensitive walls as his nut traveled up his length till eventually, it reached his angry purple head where it shot out in batches of thick, sludge-like baby batter, salvo after salvo, Naruto made do on what he said and filled her up, each scorching hot load drawing satisfied coups and moans out of the now, equally as her king had been, near comatose girl. There's no way this is going to be the only time this happens, Naruto said with a final smack to Akino's ass as he sighed blissfully, slowly extracting himself from her still gripping cunny, they moaned in unison on their sensitive genitalia being further stimulated from the feeling. While he was sure that if wanted, Naruto could probably go again, Akino had just had her first time and if she was anything like Rias was, then she probably would need a break after, speaking of which, he could use one two since, after a short glance at the clock, he saw that he had actually just partaken in a seven hour marathon without even a single thing to eat or drink, as they say, time flies. Smack I am gonna go get something to eat, you rest up, all right? Laying a single smack on the exhausted ravenette's thigh, gaining a low moan, Naruto left the bedroom as he was and went to the kitchen to fetch himself something to eat. Akino took this time to look to her left where Rias was still sleeping, at least, she thought she was. He's my fiancé, you can't have him, came the sleepy voice of her king and before Akino could respond, Light snores were once more the only sounds Rias was releasing. Despite her all-around exhaustion, Akino giggled tiredly at that, all it took to stop her king from hating him and whining about his every action was some really good ing, huh? If only she had known about that earlier, with that last thought, she joined Rias in her sleep, sore yet satisfied and deeply anticipating the events of the future and a certain blonde Uzumaki's role in it all. Eyes closed and laid back on the large couch that was in Rias club's room with plush thighs as soft as marshmallows acting as his pillows and a soft hand soothingly stroking through his hair while massaging his scalp, Naruto Uzumaki was at the height of bliss, that is without including any sort of carnal activity. It was the end of school and students were making their way home after the exhausting day that marked the beginning of each week, Monday. One such student was the fuming crimson-haired princess that was seated behind her mahogany desk right now. Instead of completing the work she had been assigned by the Duke A. K. A. Her father, she had been adamant that now that they were going to be in a proper relationship, only she along with those she closely vetted would be allowed to be a part of his harem as she so kindly said to him, a beast like you needs more than one girl to slake his lusts on. And so Rias had taken to fulfilling her duty as his future wife quite seriously, at the moment, she was pouting like a child as she swiped through the contents of his phone that he had given to her to get her off his back after she had seen him texting one of his friends with benefits from their class, she was just about to grumble to herself about another hussy trying to steal her husband when the sound of a knock at the orc's door stopped her. Come in, she called out. Once she saw who it was, her eyes gained a curious glint, Saji, Rias said mildly, does Sona need something from me? 
She had an idea since she had seen his eyes lock onto the still lazily napping blonde upon his entry but she wanted to hear it from the sea tree pond before making any assumptions. Genshiru Saji was many things, a devoted brother who despite the odds against him, worked his ass off to make sure that his siblings were raised properly despite the deaths of his parents and grandfather, a responsible student who strived to be the best he could be at all times, but most of all, to any that truly knew him, the one thing that he was most known for was his devout admiration of his president, Sona Sitri. His devotion to the Sitri heir was unquestionable, from the moment she helped him pay for his siblings' needs to the day she reincarnated him, he swore an oath to himself to help her realize whatever it is she dreamed of accomplishing, following her orders without question and completing whatever task she asked of him, he made sure she had a use for him in all endeavors. But as he entered the occult research club's club room after being given the task of retrieving one of the most notorious students of Kuo Academy, he couldn't help but be captivated for a single moment by the beauty of his king's rival and her queen like he was every time he saw them. While Sona was slim and boasted a figure that most girls who worked their entire lives would still fail to achieve, Rias and Akino were incarnate, with curves more pronounced than a coke bottle and breasts large enough that they drew your eyes to them like earth to the moon. Saji felt that he could understand even more the reason that his friend and fellow Pan Issei fell for a girl like Rias, she was downright irresistible. But thinking about the guy made Saji also feel sorry for him, it wasn't a secret what had happened to him, almost everyone in the school had seen what had happened, it was why Issei hadn't been at school the whole day and looking at the cause of it all, simply resting as though had done anything strenuous the entire day boiled the Sitri Pan's blood. Even so, Saji wouldn't try anything not with both Rias and Akino there, albeit he doubted he stood a chance against the blonde even if they weren't if what Sona had told her peerage about the guy's strength was true. But that's not what he's here for, mentally shaking himself away from those thoughts, he looked back to see Rias had been waiting for him to get out of his head. Well, she asked him, ignoring the small lapse in their conversation. My apologies, Lady Sona wants to speak with him, Saji replied, pointing, rather rudely in Rias' opinion, at Naruto. Akino smiled and gave a small wave to Saji when he looked in their direction, an amused feeling entering her being at the jealous look he had for an almost unnoticeable moment before Rias' voice brought his attention back to her. And would you happen to know what she wants to speak with him about? Rias asked Saji, her tone filled with suspicion. She didn't know for sure but Rias got the feeling like she would have to watch out for her rival, childhood friend when it came to her being around Naruto. Sona was a rational and trustworthy girl. That is true but Rias knew firsthand what it was like to be seduced by the beast of a man she now called her fiancé, it was him that she couldn't trust. She's heard the rumors, how he was seen entering the student council's office for long periods of time on multiple occasions, as pathetic as it was to see them do so, she thanked the nosy humans of this school that gossiped more than they studied since she wouldn't have known about their meetings otherwise. Had already proven himself to be more incubus than devil with what he did to both her and Akino. There was no telling just what had do if given the chance with a girl like Sona and so she made it her responsibility to make sure the two stayed separated. Rias had been successful thus far but she hadn't expected Sona to call for him directly instead of letting Naruto go to her. That just seemed out of the norm for the bespectacled girl. No, she just told me to get him to come to the student council if he was free, Saji said but then paused as he looked contemplative, though she did tell me to tell him that it was time for their weekly match. Whatever that means, he muttered and sent a subtle glare at Naruto's still peaceful form. Rias thought about what that could mean for a moment before her eyes widened in surprise and then narrowed in even further suspicion, quickly schooling her features, she spoke, Well I am sorry to say this, but you can tell Sona that he's currently busy with something at the moment. Or rather, with someone, Rias thought as she watched the young man rest peacefully atop Akino's thighs, a position most boys in the academy would kill for. I am sorry Lady Gremory but she was rather adamant that I don't take no for an answer, Saji said apologetically while internally he was annoyed at that, why Sona was associated with someone like Naruto is beyond him, that and what Rias said made no sense, how could someone sleeping be considered busy? Rias' right eye twitched in annoyance at that, it was just like Sona to make sure that everything went the way that she wanted, Rias was just about to reply to Saji but stopped when she saw Naruto raising himself up and off his resting place, however, her beautiful features twisted in anger when she saw the obvious reluctance in which he did so. Thanks for that Akino, best rest I've gotten in a while, Naruto said as he stretched his arms and body out, Akino, and to some degree, Rias as well, licked her lips as she watched the muscles in his upper body twitch and ripple with each of his movements. Now then, 
Naruto grumbled under his breath as he turned from the couch to look at the club's visitor after had finished stretching. Saji, he sighed and looked the boy over. If he wasn't such a dog waiting to be pet by his master, Naruto felt confident that he and his fellow blonde could have been friends. He held a staunch dislike for people that willingly allowed others to order them around. That dislike only increased if they actively desired said direction and sadly, Saji fell in that category. Tell Sona it'll be right over, yay? Naruto said nonchalantly yet everyone in the room knew that despite his tone being light, it brokered no arguments yet Saji felt that he couldn't allow what he believed to be such casual disrespect to the girl he viewed so highly. Excuse you. Saji began. Ignoring the look both Rias and Akino were sending him that said to stop before he regretted it, Lady Sona is not to be kept why the words that were arrogantly rolling off his tongue like a waterfall dried up like a drop of water in a desert, or more like froze, for just a moment, Naruto's glacial blue eyes locked onto his own but a moment was more than enough. Pure unadulterated fear paralyzed Saji's body as images of his gruesome death at the hands of the blonde monster in front of him passed through his mind before, like a breeze passing by, it was over. Gasps of air left his mouth as he took gulps of the life-giving element after subconsciously holding his breath, his body instinctively doing everything it could to make him as still and unnoticeable as possible in the face of an apex predator. Almost as though he hadn't nearly driven someone to madness with just a brief flare of his power, Naruto turned, this time his eyes focused on the one seated behind the mahogany desk, not without repeating himself, however, there was the possibility that Saji had forgotten what had said earlier in his brief episode. Yee yeah, no problem, I'll make sure she gets the message, he muttered pathetically before figuratively escaping out the door, leaving complete silence in his wake. Rias, Naruto's voice cut through the silence, his smooth baritone soothing the two girls beating hearts and making them sigh unknowingly in almost perfect sync. They thought that they were about to witness someone's death so to see it all go smoothly, in the end, was a welcome relief. Rias felt shame as a throb of pleasure radiated throughout her body the moment his half-lidded smoldering blue eyes locked onto her own. She hated how every time he laid his eyes on her she felt like a gazelle being stalked by a cheetah, she was the proud heiress of the Gremory clan, no man, whether he be strong or not should make her feel weak in the knees like Naruto did to her so effortlessly. There was no way that his casual showing of power had affected her in any way. It wouldn't be right for someone like her to be so easily influenced by some hunk of a man easily dominating those that went against him. Just thinking about how he crushed her best friend's pawn spirit with but a glance reminded her of an altercation between Naruto and her former boyfriend earlier that day, how it made her heartbeat quicken and her panties dampen, she'd truly never been so aroused as she had been then but seeing as she still had school to attend, Rias put her arousal on the back burner. Until now that is, when she first felt like this, Rias had called her mother and spoke to her about it, she had asked her if there were any explanations as to why she felt this way, was there some sort of power that the Uzumaki clan had that helped them in the subjugation and acquisition of lovers, or was it something to do with Naruto himself? There had to be an explanation that her mother, whose experience in life was nearly fifty times greater than Rias' own, could give her, what she wasn't prepared for, was for the reason for her weak knees, her sudden arousal at just the presence of the blonde Uzumaki to be something completely different. The things her mom said to her that night caused her face to match the color of her hair and would probably never leave the red-headed devil's memory until the end of time, even then Rias felt it was a fair bet that she would still remember all of it in the afterlife. The sound of a throat clearing brought her out of her thoughts, minorly confused, Rias' eyes widened when she realized Naruto was still waiting on her response after he called her name. S sorry. Do you need something? Rias cursed herself internally at her stutter. How would she make him see her as a woman who could stand by his side if she acted like a meek little girl every time he talked to her? Yay, I am gonna need my phone back. Wah but I am not done with. Rias began to argue but trailed off when Naruto raised his palm up to her, then flipped it and motioned for her to give him what had asked for. Mouth agape at the way he was casually ordering her around. Rias was about to yell at Naruto and tell him just what she thought of his constant disrespect when she realized that she was already standing in front of him while her traitorous body handed his phone over to him. Thank you. He gave her a small smile and caressed the top of her head, which the redhead would never admit to anyone nearly made her swoon, and turned to walk out the door leaving two speechless girls, one at her own actions and the second at the others. When Naruto entered the student council's base of operations, had wondered for a moment if maybe he should have entered through the door like a regular student, 
It was only for a moment though as he shrugged while taking in the sight of Sona's peerage members' expressions as they ranged from disbelief, anger, and even lust from some of what he knew were her newer members. Although Naruto couldn't say he was surprised, even he would be angered if someone entered the orc without any warning or knock, what he was surprised about, however, was the fact that they were preparing their magics, probably in case, the blonde was there for anything nefarious. The members of Sona's peerage believed they were ready to defend their king from whatever the blonde could dish out which confused him, had she not told them who he was. When Naruto saw them tensing their muscles when they saw Sona stand up from behind her desk, he wasn't surprised when instead of a command to attack, she gave them the complete opposite. Everyone, stand down. Sona's voice resounded throughout the room. Confusion filled her peerage's faces and there were some who were prepared to argue, but none were more daring than her pawn. President. I have no idea why you would send me to bring this, Savage here, and I apologize for speaking out, but there's no way you'd associate with someone like him. He yelled in what he believed to be her defense. What he somehow didn't see that Naruto did was the slight narrowing of Sona's violet eyes behind her glasses and the way in which she clenched her fists in order to keep her stoic facade from failing and uncovering the hidden anger beneath. And might I ask just who it is that has made that decision for me? It can't have been you correct? There's no way you would try and decide who it was that I could associate with, correct? When she received no reply from her quailed pawn, she exhaled to calm herself and smoothed her skirt against her smooth legs. Now then, I need to speak with Lord Uzumaki in private so I would ask that you all turn in for the day, I'll see you all tomorrow. Naruto watched as while reluctant, Sona's peerage members each left because they trusted in their king's judgment not without her queen whispering words of warning without even trying to hide that they were aimed at him if the looks she was giving him meant anything. It also didn't stop some of them from glaring at him as they did so, their attempts to intimidate him amused him but Naruto wouldn't let it show as he knew it would only cause more problems, one of them, however, decided he wasn't content with just glaring. You can't be serious president, you've heard the rumors, he can't be trusted to be alone with you. Saji, Sona glared at the boy, effectively shutting him up. Why yes president? He looked at her, hopeful that somehow she would see what he was saying made sense. Get out, and he was shut down almost immediately. Yes president, Saji obeyed but not without sending one last scathing glance at Naruto, it may have had an effect on the blonde if he was somewhere near his level, but to the overpowered Uzumaki Saji's glare had the same effect as a puppy's growl, completely ineffective and more of a nuisance than anything. Well that was something, Naruto said after Saji left. The amusement in his tone obvious, when she turned her glare to him, he raised his hands up in mock surrender. What, it's not my fault your pawn has something out for me, though I do have a feeling what it could be, Naruto said while shrugging his shoulders and slyly muttering the last part. I will admit Saji is rather, brash, she ignored Naruto's snort at that, but he is still getting used to life as a devil no matter how comfortable he looks, Sona moved to the shelves along the walls of the room before opening one of its cabinets and reaching inside. Now then, her petite hands came out with a board game that was extremely popular amongst devils, Naruto not so much, looking over at Naruto who was still standing and looking at her with a disgruntled expression, she gestured to the seat in front of her desk, aren't you going to have a seat? Naruto was about to give her a rude reply before he stopped with a sigh at her obvious scheme, I am sighing a lot today aren't I, and deciding to just sit down in the plush cushion of the chair and eye the piece of wood Sona placed between them. Sona was beautiful. Naruto would and could never lie about that, and as a man who was surrounded by attractive women all his life, he felt there was no better judge, her slim yet lithe figure was always a joy to behold. The way her violet eyes sparkled whenever they played chess their weekly ritual, the sight of her shapely ass and strong legs whenever she bent over to get something in front of him, her Kuo uniform doing nothing to cover her uncharacteristically raunchy panties. As he watched her approach where, Naruto readily admitted to himself that if it wasn't for the troublesome situation that would come about from betting the sea tree air, he more than likely would have done so already. Sadly, or not, that decision was slowly being made for him. You didn't bring me out of my peaceful rest on the soft pillows known as Akino's thighs just to play this boring game did you? He said in annoyance at his rest being interrupted for something like this. And so what if I did? Sona asked him ignoring how the mention of what had been doing with Rhea's queen affected her, standing so close to him that he could smell the faint scent of her perfume and hair conditioner, she continued, what would you do if you found out I did just that? Naruto had an idea of where she was going with that question but as it was Sona, 
he didn't feel that taking that risk was worth and so he merely grunted in reply. Her only reply was a single raised eyebrow and barely hid an amusement before she leaned away from him, taking the pleasing scent with her. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, ill stop wasting your most precious time, Lord Uzumaki, Sona said, her eyes half-lidded and gazing into his own. She began setting up the board while starting on what Shed truly called him to the Stu Cuz office for. Let's start with what I consider the most important. You somehow got the prideful girl that I've called my best friend since childhood to agree to the marriage contract that she was against to the point where I doubt she would have been above trying to kill you and I want to know how. Naruto smirked at that but didn't comment causing Sona to narrow her eyes at him before she continued. Second, the incident this morning, she began sternly. Not only did you start a fight with a student of Kuo Academy, but based on reports given to me, the outcome of the said fight has more than likely done irreparable mental damage to a member of Rias Peerage, and that is not something I can accept. The smirk on Naruto's face widened at that reminder of what had occurred as soon as he made it to the academy. When he had arrived at school that day, it had been with both Rias and Akino hugging his arms to their chests. Rias said this was her way of making sure everyone knew he was taken but he knew it was just an excuse for her to press against his muscled form, as throughout the entire walk to the academy, her hand never stopped caressing his arms and the various muscles on his upper body. Of course, Rias' boyfriend had seen them when he went to greet her at the school's entrance and he had been gobsmacked, it was amusing to watch Issei squirm and be at a complete loss of what to do about their intimacy but eventually, Naruto had grown bored with that and walked past him, bringing the two girls with him. It was then that the young devil had made a mistake. He threw a punch at Naruto, it hadn't even been something for the blonde Uzumaki to worry about. A punch from someone like Issei was like a mosquito biting an elephant, unnoticeable. It didn't stop him from ignoring when Rias asked him to at least go easy on him much to Issei's further dismay at her not defending him, and it definitely didn't stop him from beating the boy to the point that had need some sort of magic to heal him if he didn't want to be sore for the next month. When it was over and done with, Rias had scolded Issei. Not only had he tried to attack her fiancé, but he had tried to attack a high-class devil, he was lucky that Naruto hadn't killed him as the punishment for doing so was usually execution, with one last command to apologize to the blonde and to be grateful for the mercy Naruto had given him from Rias. Issei had left Kuo Academy's grounds to go home and lick his wounds, he didn't even get to question her on what got him angry in the first place. Back in the student council's office, Sona watched as Naruto seemingly finished his brief reminiscence as he looked at her and shrugged. I don't know what to say to that, it wasn't my fault that the idiot thought he could fight me, and for what? To take back the girl that was never his in the first place? How stupid is that? Naruto seethed, besides, he's lucky I did what I did to him, my mother threatened to cave Issei's head in when Shed first heard the situation, and I don't doubt that she meant it. After hearing that, Sona just looked at him, or rather through him, for a moment, while it was well known just how strong the Uzumaki clan was amongst almost all devils, there were none more infamous than Kashina Uzumaki and to hear that she of all people had wanted to come to the human world to dish out punishment on Rias Pond that was stopped by her son, Sona thought that Issei should buy a lottery ticket with how lucky he was to be alive right now. Still, there must have been better ways to deal with it, if you convinced your mother not to do so, why couldn't you do the same with yourself? Sona reprimanded him, the boy I knew wasn't someone who would lord his power over others. Naruto glowers at her at that, well, people change, he said in anger before confusion took over his mind as he watched Sona move to where he was seated, the grace in which she did so reminding him of a lioness stalking its prey until. Oomph. Naruto grunted as Sona sat down directly in his lap with her back facing his chest, and folded her legs so that she was completely on him. All right then. Let's get away from that topic. What color will you be? White? Or black? Sona asked him with a smile while acting like she wasn't doing anything indecent. She brought the chessboard shed set up on the table earlier closer and looked up at Naruto from where she had rested her head against his chest when he didn't answer, though who could blame him? The nonchalance she was showing at her actions was surprising to him but he then smirked when he registered her question. That part of me hasn't changed and I doubt it ever will he said and wrapped his arms around her to get comfortable, his arms right below her breasts before motioning her to take the first move, had always been a reactor, letting others attack him first to gauge their skill then either crushing them with a few decisive blows if they were far below him or having an all-out brawl if their skill level was near or above his own. She smiled and did as he said and moved her pawn forward taking the first move, 
Whatever had made him upset earlier was no longer present and so their game of chess moved along smoothly. This wasn't the first time something like this had happened Sona sitting on his lap that is, ever since had first been to this office to do their weekly routine which was playing chess, he could tell something was different about the Sona, she would look at him in ways that he was used to seeing in the eyes of those he was sleeping with, it wasn't until recently that she started to escalate from looks to touches, and then eventually to the position she was in now. He grunted as Sona moved around in an attempt to find a more comfortable position, inadvertently grinding her round bottom on his crotch before pausing as she felt the effects her movements had on his manhood. A glance up at him showed a glint of something no one would ever consider possible to see in her eyes before she continued to shift her backside back and forth along the growing length inside Naruto's pants. It seemed that she wanted to take their little relationship to an even higher level. Have you made yourself comfortable yet you minx? Naruto asked her. The strain in his voice would be missed by anyone else, but not Sona. She moved a bit more as though she still hadn't found the spot that felt best yet when she was just using it as an excuse to continue humping against his now protruding crotch. Hum. I am quite comfortable now. Thank you very much for asking. Now as I asked earlier but you were too arrogant to answer me with more than a smirk. What did a brute like you do to seduce my best friend? Are you sure you want to know? Naruto asked while moving his hands down from her midsection to her hips, carefully unbuttoning her uniform as they made their way down. You think you can handle what I did to her and Akino? And Akino, she moaned, I fear for my chastity if you've somehow gotten her in your little group of conquests, Sona said while gasping and moaning at the feeling of his hands brushing over her sensitive skin. Once Naruto had finished undoing the last button on Sona's top, he brought her arms up with one hand while he used the other to begin taking it off, bringing his other arm down to help when Sona held her arms up by herself for him. Now that she was free of her shirt, Naruto admired the navy blue lace bra that was revealed to have been hidden underneath, Sona blushed as Naruto raised an eyebrow at her choice of underwear. What? I can wear something why if I want, there's nothing saying only girls like Rias can, she huffed before keening as Naruto ground his hardcock into her panty clad. Hey, who said I even had a problem with it? In fact, here let me prove to you my appreciation. It's okay, you don't have to prove any da, fuu. Sona bit back a curse and moaned as Naruto brought one of his hands to fondle her breast through her bra, her eyes going unfocused as the feeling of his large palms mercilessly groping her covered breasts were divine to her senses, she cried out when Naruto started pinching and twisting her nipples before her cries were muffled by his lips connecting with her own. Naruto had used the position they were in to his benefit, holding Sona by her chin, he captured the lips of the girl that had been tantalizing him for the past weeks and Sona instantly melted into it. Keeping her lips connected to his, she turned her body in his lap so that she was now straddling Naruto's hips and moved so her arms encircled the back of his neck, deepening their connection. Separating with a gasp for air, the two stared into one another's lust-filled eyes for a moment before diving right back into it. The two of them passionately locked lips for the next couple of minutes only separating sparingly when the need for air became too much or to whisper seductive words into the other's ears. Feeling as Sona leaned into his chest once more, Naruto listened as she let out a multitude of whimpers and whines through their connection before she squealed as his hands that had gone back to her hips some time while they were making out, moved lower and gripped onto her bare ass cheeks that had been exposed by her skirt riding up on her behind from her grinding. Naruto reluctantly separated from the kiss leaving Sona breathless, and watched, enthralled by the sight of his hands being engulfed by her delectably plump cheeks, staring over her nude back down to where his hands were. Naruto manipulated the flesh of her ass with extreme dexterity, pulling them apart and groping them before he moved back, leaned down, and began kissing and sucking at the delicate skin of her neck, enjoying the erotic mules that she released in response. Going back to her lips as he couldn't resist their sweet flavor for long, Naruto sealed her mouth with his own, groaning as Sona quickly reciprocated his advances with burning hot desire. After a bit, they detached from one another. Though Sona placed one last chaste kiss on Naruto's lips before she looked up at him with her violet eyes shining with hunger, a sight that made Naruto smirk. Why don't we change this up a bit, yay? He asked though he was already in motion. Gripping her by her hips, Naruto lifted Sona in the air, laughing as she squeaked in surprise and clutched onto his arms, and put her down so that she was seated on top of her desk. Sona instantly claimed his lips once she was seated the desk making it easier for her to reach as she gripped his locks in her hands to hold him in place, Naruto grinned as it seemed he wasn't the only one who was getting addicted to the taste of the other's lips. 
While her hands held him in place for her to have some semblance of control over their clash, Naruto's did not remain idle. Letting go of her hips, he removed her skirt and threw it over his shoulder and if Sona minded the mess he was making with her clothes in the room, she was too busy focusing on eating his face to say so. She bit his lip lightly and groaned into his mouth as he started to lightly massage her downstairs lips with a single finger, her lithe body jolting and quivering with each sensation it brought to her hyperactive nervous system. You like that huh? Naruto teased Sona and sped up his movements, his breathy voice brushing past her ear sending tingles down her spine. NNGH, was the only sound Sona could make to reply, the pleasure he was giving her causing her to grit her teeth so that she didn't scream, Sona's legs kicked and her toes curled while her chest rose and fell with each rapid breath that she took, pushing her head into his neck, Naruto grunted as Sona bit down on his shoulder and whimpered when she felt that she was on the verge of coming. Despite the slight pain he felt from her teeth biting into his skin, it was easily ignored in favor of pushing the squirming sea tree heiress underneath him to orgasm. Doubling his speed and changing up the way he was moving his hand to also lightly tease her clit every now and then, Naruto felt accomplished when Sona's body forced her teeth off his shoulder to yell her completion. Uo myng satan nung, I am coming, Sona screamed while hugging her body close to Naruto's as though he was the only thing keeping her connected to the earth, and to some degree it was true. Sona had masturbated before. Shed used toys and other items to reach orgasm before but nothing compared to what she was feeling at the moment. The moment she felt Naruto's hands on her she knew it was going to be different than anything Shed ever done for herself. It was like he was a musician and she was his instrument. Naruto had played her body effortlessly and when he sent her over the edge and her body was spasming and convulsing in pleasure, it made Sona feel like she was floating over the clouds of heaven, basking in the warmth the sun provided. Then she fell back to the earth. Going limp in Naruto's arms, Sona coughed and gasped for breath as Shed unconsciously held her breath after the massive climax she just experienced. Naruto rubbed her back affectionately, not able to do much else but comfort her until she eventually stopped coughing and her breathing returned to normal. You good? He asked to confirm if she still wanted to continue, though she could detect a small hint of smugness in his voice for the result of his actions. It wasn't every day you got to say that you made the Sona sea tree president of the student council and heiress to the Seatree family, nearly reach rapture with how hard she climaxed. Weakly slapping his chest at that, Sona replied, Yay, just give me a moment to regain my bearings. After a bit, Sona moved her hand to the back of his head, bringing him closer till their foreheads were touching, and said something that drove Naruto wild. I want you to me on my desk, you think you can do that big guy? She said while caressing the massive bulge she saw in his pants with her small hands, Ignoring the groans and growls Naruto released from the feeling. Do you think a savage like you could do that for me? Pound my pussy till I am quivering in ecstasy and your hot, nasty, load, is dripping from my cunt all over my desk and the floor of the room where I do all my business? Sona knew she was acting completely out of character with how she was talking. Not only were the things she was saying were out of the norm but her actions completely contradicted everything that she had built her reputation upon, instead of control and discipline. Being in the presence of Uzumaki Naruto made her completely forget about all of that, so when he brought her to orgasm, she felt that something inside her had unlocked or rather, snapped, letting whatever pent-up desires and emotions she had been holding back for the sake of her appearance with it. Sona would deal with the anomaly that came with being in contact with Naruto later, at the moment she desired the blonde mon's dick, and Sona would have it no matter how embarrassing she found her current lack of poise was. It seemed Naruto had the same idea because Sona yelped when he reached down to her sodden panties and tore them clean off her hips with a snarl, exposing her moist pussy to the cool air of the student council's office. And Naruto. She moaned as he brought one hand to finger her while he used the other to take off his pants. Sona bit her lip, a thrill of excitement filling her being as she watched Naruto undress, first taking off his top he had to momentarily stop pleasuring her that was soaked on the bottom in what she believed to be her orgasmic juices, exposing his sculpted upper body and defined abs for her viewing pleasure, his pants followed as Naruto undid their fastening and let them drop down before carelessly kicking them away. The sea tree heiress anticipation and arousal only grew further when she saw him grip his boxers and go to pull them down, slowly freeing the tree trunk of hard cock meat shed seen contained inside of them and had been secretly lusting for since the moment Naruto entered the room. Shit. This. 
Sona was startled out of her lust-fueled admiration of Naruto's Adonis-like body when she heard more than saw him do away with his boxers in much of the same way had done with her panties when he couldn't take them off as fast as he wanted with only access to one hand. Naruto tossed the ripped fabric behind him and Sona wouldn't say it out loud but it stroked her pride to know that a man like him wanted her so badly that had grown impatient with something as simple as taking his and her clothing off. A sinister part of Sona's mind couldn't wait to tell Rias all about their encounter. The sight of Naruto's body in all its nakedness along with the feeling of his pointer finger, now joined by his middle as well, still skillfully toying and scraping against her walls nearly drove her to another orgasm. Apparently, Naruto noticed as well since he stopped the exact millisecond before Sona fell over the height of pleasure getting a keening whine from the girl. Don't worry, you'll get to come, just not by my fingers, no, that right belongs to this guy, Naruto stated with obvious intent slapping his cock against her stomach and right above her soaking arousal. Sona's violet eyes were locked onto his cock that was resting against her taut belly in stunned silence, she was slightly intimidated by its size when she saw that its length ran up from her crotch to a bit past her navel even but a part of her found the sight extremely arousing. You see how deep my dick will reach in your pussy? He asked while slowly thrusting his cock up and down against her midriff smearing her abdomen with his precum before bringing it down to tease her now less sensitive lower lips. MMMHMM. Sona listlessly bobbed her head up and down in response, barely registering that Naruto was talking as her focus was completely taken by his cock that was now poking and prodding her opening. To Sona's embarrassment, she felt her cunt, without her conscious thought, grip, and cling to the little of Naruto's dick that he inserted and withdrew to tease her. Looking up at Naruto's hooded blue eyes that instantly locked with her own, Sona conveyed a message that words could not, getting a smirk from Naruto that if she were wearing panties, would cause her to need to replace them. Ooh. They both groaned in unison when instead of withdrawing the next time Naruto inserted that little bit of his cock into her snug opening, the blonde continued burrowing his dick into her welcoming moist tunnel without stopping. Damn Sona, you're tight as, Naruto grit his teeth at the insane grip Sona's vagina had on his cock, she was way tighter than either Rias or Akino. It felt like he was inserting his dick into a vice with how her walls were clutching onto his member. Then he hit a barrier, knowing what it was and how important it was to women and especially someone of Sona's stature. Naruto looked down and was greeted with two violet orbs looking back up at him. In a moment of clarity outside the haze of lust, he asked Sona how she felt about going forward. Are you sure you want to do this Sona? Want your family be upset? As though each of their minds was clearing up if only momentarily, Sona's face twisted in annoyance. Don't worry about my family. Now so help me Satan if you're not in me within the next five seconds I will make you regret it Uzumaki. Mentally shrugging at Sona basically commanding him to her, who'd be stupid enough to decline that, Naruto pulled back his hips till only the head of his cock remained inside of Sona's pussy, when she began to shake her hips in a lewd dance to get him to re-enter her fully Naruto slammed forward bottoming out and spreading her tight velvet walls as he took her virginity in one fell swoop. Oh my Satan Naruto, your dick is so big inside me. Sona yelled as she felt her pussy spread around his cock, barely even registering the pain of losing her chastity over the pleasure she felt. Grabbing onto her legs, Naruto made sure Sona wouldn't fall off the edge of the desk before he started sawing into her. Slowly, back and forth, Naruto forced his cock to enter Sona's depths, lightly kissing her womb each time he bottomed out, and scraping his bell end against her g-spot each time he withdrew. While he was giving her deep kisses down below, Sona reached up and brought him into a kiss up above, she moaned incoherently into their connection as Naruto was quickly bringing her back to another orgasm, this time without stopping. He was now slamming into her, filling the room with the lewd sound of flesh slapping against flesh, Sona knew that if the walls weren't soundproof, anyone that had been on campus would be able to hear their rough lovemaking. A scream tore out from Sona's throat, forcing her lips off Naruto's as he changed his brutal pace, expertly grinding his dick against her walls, and keeping her body still so that she could do nothing but take it, he moved his hips in a tantalizing circle, churning her insides like butter and causing Sona to see stars in her vision from the pleasure. Biting her lip to stop herself from screaming once Naruto began targeting her G-spot over and over again, Sona tasted blood as tears of pleasure clouded her eyesight. Um, Sona keened, her pale face turning red as she tried her best to hold back her oncoming orgasm. It was not to be as Naruto got tired of the slow pace and began hammering into her again. 
The sudden change in pace sent Sona flying over the edge and into the most intense orgasm Shed ever felt, while her earlier climax had made her feel like she was basking in the sun's warmth above the clouds in the sky. This one put her in space staring down at the earth from above, it was like she had been drugged, her body was unresponsive yet Sona felt that she could feel every nerve ending in her body reacting to some unseen stimuli. Only when she woke up with a gasp atop her office's couch did she realize that she had passed out from the intensity of her climax, she twitched as her cunt spasmed and looked around till her eyes landed on the reason for her current predicament and the fact that he was still extremely hard, and aching if his cockhead's angry purple color meant anything. Seated beside her, Naruto watched as Sona crawled to where he was, he was surprised she was ready to go again so soon after she had come so explosively, if she were a human, had have assumed she was having a seizure with how violently she was twitching and shaking. It was a good thing she did though because Naruto was right on the verge of joining her, her unnatural tightness doing its best to wring the load out of his balls. Naruto was slightly confused but allowed it when Sona pushed him to lay down on the couch, doing so. He was treated to the sight of the sea tree heiress maneuvering her lithe body till she was squatting over his dick. Bringing her hand down to grab his dick, Sona lowered herself before positioning it at her entrance. Using her other hand, she placed it on the center of Naruto's pectorals to balance herself while slowly introducing Naruto's girthy member inside of herself once again. Once the tip was inside, Sona used her now free hands to feel his muscled torso while she continued to lower her plump ass onto his crotch. Jesus Christ! Naruto whispered, unaffected by the holy name, as he felt Sona's extremely tight walls begin to envelop him once again, there wasn't a doubt in his mind that this would be a regular occurrence, had deal with the fallout whenever it came but there was no way he was giving up this sinful pussy. Sona was of the same mind, she was going to do whatever it took to make sure she could feel this pleasure again, even if she had to go against her parents. Three quarters of the way down his dick, Sona moaned Naruto's name as she began to bounce and twerk her ass along his length, slowly and meticulously taking more of his cock with each downward motion. Obscenities left her mouth like a waterfall from the sensations her body was getting. Her mind felt light and Sona doubted her body would ever forget the feeling of Naruto's dick carving through her once uncorrupted body. She knew that whenever she saw the handsome blonde from now on that she, the one that was supposed to be in charge of the moral purity and discipline of the students of Kuo Academy, would only be able to think about when the next time she could recreate this lustful experience with him was. Hearing Naruto grunt underneath her, Sona was smug at the fact she was pleasuring him so intensely before she screamed when he suddenly started thrusting up into her, meeting her whenever she plunged down and scraping out her insides whenever she went back up. It was amazing whenever Sona took more of him in, and when she exposed his cock to the cool air of the room, it added to the pleasure he was feeling, but Naruto wanted more, gripping her hips to steady her, he ed up into her at a brutal pace, his balls slapped against her ass cheeks, generating ripples in her meat as she bounced. Ah! Me! Sona cried out, her pussy squelching and splashing juices onto Naruto's lap as she had a continuous cluster of mini-orgasms. Naruto growled as he hugged her body down to his, using the new position to get even deeper into her cunt. He already didn't know how much longer he could last with the way her tunnel was clenching and massaging his cock, add to that the reckless way Sona's thick ass was bouncing on his dick and he knew it wouldn't be that much longer before he blew his load. Slapping her ass Naruto groaned when the violet-eyed girl's cunt clenched almost painfully around his dick, shit Sona, if you grip me that hard it'll come. It seemed that was all she needed to hear as the moment he said that Sona let loose, loud wails left her mouth as her body jerked and bucked on top of him, bringing Naruto to let release his stored up lusts inside her, Sona. Take it all inside you. Sona whimpered weakly as the first shot of Naruto's hot semen was shot into her. It felt like Shed just drank hot cocoa with the way it warmed her belly and soothed her exhausted body. When the second and the third came, Sona unknowingly beat her best friend by maintaining her consciousness despite her obvious fatigue, and when Naruto groaned as his cock injected the last bits of his syrupy ball batter into Sona's battered womb, he was greeted by the lewd sight of Sona hovering her hands over where her womb was before she looked up at him from where she lay on his chest, a cheeky yet tired smile forming on her face. I guess this counts as a checkmate huh? If the walls weren't soundproof Naruto was sure that the entire campus would be able to hear his laughter. For the past couple of weeks, Kaneko had noticed something, ever since the arrival of her king's fiancé. There had been a distinct change in the attitudes of the two leaders of her peerage and it all had to do with the distinct change, or rather, 
addition to their sense that the young Nekosho had noticed during said duration. Whether they be human or any supernatural being, they all have different smells, it's this difference that has been Kaneko's main form of detection and identification of any person she was familiar with. You see everyone's distinct smell is unwashable and impossible to hide or cover no matter what, of course, someone could use magic to cover their scent but even then, yokai, a race that is extremely sensitive to the use of magic, would more than likely end up uncovering the deception rather quickly. So using this, she knew that the main cause for the change had to do with Naruto, his scent, alluring and tempting to her as it leaked from his pores like a busted pipe matched the one she could detect covering every nook and cranny of Rias and Akino's bodies perfectly. She'd been suspicious of him doing something magic-related at first, but after confirming with some reconnaissance that the whiskered blonde either wasn't doing it on purpose or didn't even know what he was unconsciously doing at all, Kaneko decided that it was best that she just ignored it, but that's where her main issue lie. Even when the main cause of her problem wasn't in the room with them, it was like he was still right next to her all the same, it had gotten so hard for her to ignore that after multiple close calls during stray devil hunts that Rias forced her to take a break until whatever she was dealing with was resolved. That led to where she currently was, in her bedroom and laying on her bed, Kaneko could be seen curled up, dressed in a casual white top while her shorts were pulled down to her ankles. Small grunts and whines left her mouth as one of her hands was between her legs while the other pinched and fondled her breasts, on her face lay a t-shirt that resembled that of her school's male gym uniform, looking at the tag, one could see that it had the letters U and N on it. Kaneko smelled the scent of and has experienced the effects of people unconsciously releasing their pheromones before, none of those experiences have affected her as intensely as Naruto's has and still is. It was like his scent was a drug and she had become addicted, every time she was close enough to detect it, Kaneko felt like all agency in her body was slowly being sapped away. The closest description she could use was to that of being drunk, her mind would get hazy before, much to her embarrassment, the cat girl would always get incredibly aroused and be forced to relieve herself lest she jumps him. Similar to a lioness and a lion, Kaneko felt like she went into heat whenever Naruto was around, it was confusing to her though, she knew that her biology was similar to that of a cat's because of her Nekosho genes but it's never been this bad. The only thing Kaneko could say helped was a memory of what her sister had told her when she was younger, much to her amusement at the time. Kuroka had sat her down and rather awkwardly told the adolescent version of herself that there would come a day that she would feel extremely strongly for someone, and to just follow her instincts as they wouldn't lie to her. Now while she didn't trust her sister a smidgen of a bit now ever since the incident, Kaneko couldn't help but think that what Kuroka had told her had a strong possibility at being what she was experiencing currently. The only problem was, the just follow your instincts part wasn't as easy as her sister had made it sound. There were two obstacles that stopped her from doing so, one was the embarrassment she felt of just what would happen and what she would be doing with the blonde Uzumaki if she did, the second was the fact that he was currently engaged to her king and Kaneko could never and would never get in between Rias and the one she loved, no matter how attractive his looks and aroma were to her senses. A question lingered in the Nekosha's mind, however, she had detected his scent on not just Rias, but Akino and even more recently, the student council president, so if she was fine with him sleeping with those two, as Kaneko held no doubts that Rias would know with how close the three of them were, would the Gremory princess also be fine with her joining in their little harem? That was a question she would have answered tomorrow as with a light cry that resembled a cat's nya she reached climax from her stimulation, inadvertently releasing her feline ears and tail before drifting off to sleep. A frustrated sigh left Kaneko's mouth after she finished her third trip around the entirety of Kuo Academy's campus, her search for the blonde who had caused her problems was so far unsuccessful and it was frustrating the usually unshakable girl. Add into the fact that she knew Naruto wasn't ditching as she could smell his scent, stronger than the lingering one that she usually found on the girls, and Kaneko was about to go crazy, she'd already gone to the ladies' room twice today and it was going to be thrice if she didn't find him in the next 30 minutes. Kaneko gave up when she recognized that it would be pointless to continue searching the way she was, she hadn't wanted to involve them as she realized just how mortifying it would be to be upfront with Rias about just why she needed to see Naruto but her deception proved useless in the end when she couldn't even find him. Unlike Naruto, it was as easy as entering the old school building to find Rias and Akino, they were talking about some random topic when she walked through the deceptively light mahogany doors but stopped upon noticing how strange she was acting, idly. Kaneko noticed that she was indeed acting strangely. 
Her usual face painted with the indifference that could fool even the best poker players was currently covered in a red hue. Then there were her movements. The two leaders watched on as Kaneko awkwardly shuffled from one foot to the other while crossing her arms across her stomach. After the surprise wore off on seeing just how differently her rook was acting, Rias was the first to break the uncomfortable silence. Hey Kaneko. She began lightly in hopes of getting the fidgety girl to relax, are you alright? Is there something that you wanted to ask us? Uh um, do you know where, Yudo, is? Kaneko mumbled out, her cheeks going atomic. What was that? I couldn't hear you, you'll have to speak up a bit, Rias said kindly. Kaneko took a deep breath when she realized that Shed had to repeat herself once again, mentally hyping herself up with the words Kuroka had told her in the past, she faced Rias' curious eyes and just went out with it. I need to find Naruto, do you know where he is? Kaneko watched as Rias' eyes instantly narrowed while Akino simply giggled into her palm, somehow finding amusement in whatever caused her king's reaction to her question. For a moment, the white-haired cat girl worried that she would be turned away when she wasn't given an answer straight away but Rias' next words calmed her anxious mind. He's sparring with Kiba in the girls' kendo club right now. Why? Do you need him for something? Ah. Uh, thank you. It'll be going then. Kaneko said as soon as Rias finished talking and hastily made her exit in order to get to Naruto before he moved, all while purposefully ignoring the question her king had asked her to Rias' annoyance and Akino's further amusement. Rias watched her rook's hasty retreat with a suspicious gleam in her eye. If the feeling in her gut was correct then there was only one reason why Kaneko could want to see Naruto at the moment, especially with how she had been acting whenever the blonde man was around them in the past weeks. Fufu. It seems our blonde stud is going to have another girl to satiate his lust now, aren't you proud of him, Rias? Akino's voice took her out of her thoughts. Not now Akino, and besides, we don't know that that's for sure what Kaneko needs him for, Rias said but based on Akino's disbelieving stare she didn't think the same and knew that Rias thought the same as well. But still, Akino sighed rather dramatically, gaining her king's attention. Isn't it just a shame that poor Issei's dream of being a harem king is being stolen by your fiancé? He must be devastated, she finished with a sadistic giggle. Of course, Rias thought in disbelief at what she thought was going to be serious, there was no way someone as cruel and sadistic as her queen would care about the dream of a perverted boy being crushed and stolen, and it's not like she did either, just the thought of Issei being in Naruto's place made her shiver in disgust, it was truly a shame that someone like him was bestowed with the boosted gear. In the end, however, none of that mattered to the situation at hand, right now Shed rather Kaneko be with Naruto than any other lesser man and so Rias decided Shed let this slide, she was drawing the line here though, no more girls were getting into her future husband's pants other than the ones who had done so already. If only someone could tell her, the walk to the girls' kendo club was just long enough for Kaneko to start having second thoughts about just what it was she was about to do. She didn't know how Naruto would react but she could only hope he would be okay with her seeing as she didn't know if it would even be possible for her to hold back when she finally saw him. Opening the sliding door, Kaneko gulped as she was bombarded by the masculine aroma that had been clogging her mind for the past few weeks, she didn't let that stop her, however, and entered the room that was empty much to her confusion. Did she miss him? Had he already left? Turning so that she could exit the room and continue her search, Kaneko paused as her eyes locked onto the form of someone laying on the ground in the corner of the room. Looking closer as their back was turned to her, her dazed expression lightly twisted in annoyance as she recognized the person, the only person with locks of hair both as unruly as theirs and as golden in color was the one she was looking for. It's just like him to laze around without a care in the world while I suffer, she thought to herself angrily, feeling unjustly vindictive, seeing as Naruto hadn't a clue the effect he had on her. Kaneko pushed him in hopes of waking him up. By this point though, the cat girl either didn't notice or was too aroused to care about just how heavily she was breathing, her panties were already damp from before, but now, with her sensitive nose so close to the source of Naruto's arousing pheromones, the proverbial floodgates were opening. Completely forgetting that Kiba was supposed to be with him, Kaneko placed all of her focus on where the scent of his pheromones was the strongest, an unnaturally perverted grin appeared on her face when she traced it back to Naruto's crotch. As he woke up from what was a pleasant nap after sparring with Rias Knight, Naruto groaned as he felt an amazingly hot and wet feeling on his crotch area, usually, he would be all on board for what he knew was happening as this was a normal occurrence whenever he spent a night with either Rias, Akino, or both of them, but this time, he knew he wasn't in their apartment. No, 
He was still in school, in the girls' kendo club room, so unless Rias or Akino were getting more daring, he had no idea who it was that was giving him such a pleasure-filled blowjob beside the feeling of their petite body. Deciding to just get it over with, Naruto opened his eyes and lifted his head up, the only sign of his surprise at who was sucking on his dick so reverently being a slight widening of his eyes. Truth be told, the whiskered Uzumaki was expecting to see Akino's smirking face looking up at him when he first felt the pleasurable sensation, but as his blues met golds, Naruto could say that he was pleasantly surprised. Kaneko's face was flushed as she sucked on the head of his dick. Naruto watched as her uniform stuck to her body from the amount she was sweating, some of it hanging loose and close to falling off as she had tried to cool off her warming body sometime while he had been asleep. Grunts and moans were drawn out from Naruto as he felt the way her mouth stretched around his girth while her tongue flailed against his head, Fuik, Kaneko, just like that, he said as he brought one of his hands down to her head, guiding her lightly up and down the upper half of his dick until she started doing it without his assistance. Who would have? thought that the pervert hater, Kaneko Taju Shiit would end up being a UAL harasser, eh? Naruto asked as cheekily as he could given the circumstances before he threw his head back against the ground and groaned in pleasure, ignoring the throb of pain as she tightened her mouth around the head of his cock increasing her suction and using her tongue to bathe it in her saliva. Kaneko did that for a minute, her golden orbs rolling into the back of her head at the taste of his pre-cum on her enhanced taste buds, before with one last lewd slurp, she let off on her attack and released him from her mouth, though she was done for now with sucking his dick like a lollipop, Kaneko was far from done with her worship of his engorged member. Marveling at the way his size eclipsed her face, Kaneko pushed her cheek against the side of it and enjoyed the natural warmth his dick exuded. She licked up and down the side of his cock, coating it in a layer of her saliva while the strong taste sent shivers down her spine before she kissed the tip of his dick once more doing so coated her lips in his pre that she licked off much like a cat, before with one last wet lick from the head of his cock down to where his length began, the highly aroused cat girl buried her nose in his balls where she knew the pungent aroma that had been sapping at her sanity was concentrated most. Kaneko hummed in pleasure at the noises Naruto made when she began licking his balls, she felt an intense urge to suck them, so doing as her sister told her no matter how lewd the situation she found herself in, Kaneko dipped her head down and sucked one of his orange-sized balls into her small mouth, a drop of steaming pre-jizz landed on her forehead reminding her to bring her hands up to his member and start jerking him off. Her hands were too small to wrap around his immense girth, making for a lewd image that Naruto drank in greedily with half-lidded eyes. Kaneko moaned as she popped the nut she was sucking on out of her mouth, it's your fault I am like this Naruto, she said with a pout on her face. Naruto was once again surprised when cat ears and a tail sprouted from Kaneko's head and lower back, he knew she was a Nekosho but to see it, especially in the environment they were in currently was like a burst of pure arousal to his already lust-addled mind, ignoring that for now before his restraint snapped, he asked what she meant, how is this my fault? What did I do that's made you act like this? Kaneko, her words slurring like a drunk, narrowed her eyes in mock anger at the blonde while her hands sped up their movements on his dick, you smell shoe good, I could smell the you, Akino, and Rias were having every day, m, she trailed off as she started kissing up and around his length, moving his dick this way and that before stopping and looking him in the eyes pointedly. No, you have to take responsibility for what you've done to me, Naruto moaned as she finished her desire filled tangent with a final kiss on each of his balls. While surprised at just how much of an effect had had on his fiancé's rook, Naruto saw no problem with taking responsibility for an issue that had caused, especially if the issue had such a pleasurable solution. Kaneko gagged on his dick as she tried taking him deeper than she had before, trails of spit fell from her mouth and rolled down his member when she failed to fit the latter half of his dick in her mouth, she used it as a natural lube to continue jerking off what she couldn't swallow even as she continued to gag and slurp Naruto's dick as she tried to take it all down her throat. Naruto's balls raised as he felt a spike of pleasure when Kaneko started humming with half of his cock in her throat, reaching down as he was tired of being the only one receiving pleasure, he pinched her nipples, caught off guard when she instantly began to shudder while her sucking stopped. Watching as her hips jerked and her eyes closed tightly, Naruto smirked, realizing what had just happened, lightly teasing her nipples getting a muted squeal as she still had his dick in her mouth, he went to speak his goal being to tease her when he grunted in pleasure while biting his tongue when he felt her grab his balls, her fingers dancing across their surface lightly. Ah, 
He groaned when she began to fondle them, she must be been sucking his dick for a while, while he was sleeping because he felt like nutting already and it had barely been ten minutes, that or that was how talented Kaneko was. Kaneko, Naruto grunted, I am about to come. He warned her of his impending climax but all it did was make her suck his dick harder and faster. Closing her eyes, Kaneko focused all her effort on bringing up the prize shed worked so hard to receive. Obscene moans came from her throat while a mix of drool in Naruto's unnaturally thick pre-cum began to dribble down the length of his cock as she bobbed her head up and down on his throbbing member rapidly. A hand on the back of her head along with her ears picking up his heavier breathing were all the warnings Kaneko received as she felt the vein on the underside of his cock pulse angrily. Naruto drug her head up to his tip and held her in place, ensuring that Shed taste everything he released to Kaneko's secret excitement, swirling her tongue around his head. Kaneko moaned as she got the first taste of his actual semen when a torrent of Naruto's extremely thick and hot cum raced into her mouth and down her throat. Naruto moaned deeply as he felt Kaneko do her best to swallow as much as she could, however, due to her lack of experience, the length of his orgasm quickly outpaced her swallowing and she was forced to back off his dick. Watching as she pointed his still erupting member towards her face and upper body, Naruto enjoyed the sight of the rook of Gremory quivering as the feeling of his steaming hot nut on her hypersensitive body drove her to another body quaking orgasm. Naruto moaned as he shot the last few spurts of his prodigious climax onto the still shuddering Kaneko's chest, further staining her uniform and giving the girl a beautiful pearl necklace. All right, Naruto said in satisfaction while wiping some sweat from his brow and laying on the mat again, that was a great Kaneko. Upon hearing no reply, Naruto looked down his chest to see that, to his amusement, the said catgirl was too busy licking all the excess cum off her fingers to reply to him, it was an arousing sight, one that was enough to get the blonde ready and raring to go once again. Naruto noticed that she was staring at his erect dick in reverence, more than likely not expecting him to be able to go for more than one round. Deciding to mess with her a bit, he picked her up getting a cute yelp, and moved her till she was hovering directly over his newly hardened member. She gasped in delight as he dropped her abruptly, not penetrating her just yet but the friction of his cock grinding against her pussy lips and clit was enough to send her into another eye-rolling climax. Kaneko was honestly a little scared that she'd pass out if she reached rapture again with how lightheaded this one left her. There was no time for her to think anymore though because Naruto's hands grabbed onto her hips to start grinding her against his dick. Ooh, yes, she moaned at the action, the dual sensation of his strong hands digging into her hips while he dragged her clothed cunt lips up and down his veiny girth was almost too much for her to handle. It took all of Naruto's restraint to not just pull her panties to the side and plunge his cock into her soaking quim. At this point, he knew Kaneko wouldn't mind such an action but he wanted to bring her to the peak once more before he allowed himself to claim her velvet walls. Lifting one of his hands to the back of her head, Naruto used the other to prop himself up off the ground so that he could kiss her, and Kaneko gladly reciprocated, for the next few minutes, muffled whimpers and the sound of their lips smacking against one another's were the only sounds that were heard in the dojo, barely separating for more than a couple of seconds at a time. Both tried their best to figuratively devour the other's lips. Kaneko mewled as Naruto's impatience won the figurative battle against his restraint, yet instead of his dick piercing her folds, it was his hand under her uniform skirt that was giving her pleasure, Naruto. Kaneko wailed as she felt his fingers penetrate her sopping cunt, his fingers were much larger than her own so it was a completely different experience than what she was expecting from her own experience of masturbating. A keening whine escaped Kaneko's lips when he curved his fingers inside of her so that they pressed against her G-spot with every thrust of his palm against her cunt. Quickly, he brought her to an explosive orgasm with his experienced technique, drenching his hand and soaking their crotches in her UAL juices. Naruto wasted no time after that, bringing the hand coated in her juices to his mouth, he licked it clean and grinned down at the excited and blushing form of his soon-to-be newest conquest. Delicious, he teased to her further embarrassment that is until she decided to make a bold move and take the same hand that he had licked and do the same. Naruto growled in lustful hunger as Kaneko looked up at him, her golden eyes lidded with equal or even greater amounts of desire while she sucked on each of his digits one at a time. Fuick, Kaneko, you look so hot doing that, he said, shocks and jolts of pleasure going through his body as he felt her tongue go between his fingers, his lover ensuring that every square inch of his hand was covered in a thin layer of her saliva instead of her orgasmic juices. Raising herself up once she was finished, Kaneko once again sat on his pulsating length. 
bumping and grinding her uncovered slit against his girth while whining and biting down on her lower lip whenever the head of his cock brushed against her clit. Her mouth was stuck open and her eyes were closed tight as she experienced an amount of pleasure that was equal to or maybe even greater than when she was finger ed to orgasm by Naruto a short while ago. Any more than this and Kaneko was sure that her mind would be fried from ecstasy. Fortunately, or not depending on which of the two you asked, the whiskered blonde could sense just how close the girl on his lap was to reaching Nirvana. The only thing was, whether or not he would act on it, soon, however, his lust beat out his rational thinking, and the only warning Kaneko got for this fact was his hands on her hips and the strength of their grip slowly increasing. Gritting her teeth and letting out a feline like hiss when he used the hold he had gotten to drag her up till the tip of his cock was placed right at her vagina's entrance, Kaneko looked into his blue eyes, darkened and filled with an unquenchable hunger and instinctively knew that the next few minutes would be filled with nothing but mind-numbing pleasure. You ready? Naruto asked while caressing her slender waist, getting a slow but sure nod from Kaneko as they continued to hold eye contact. Knowing that his size was overwhelming to most, even devils with their supernatural makeup, Naruto took his time sinking her onto himself so that she could slowly get used to the feeling of him inside of her, in spite of that, Kaneko still felt a slight amount of pain alongside the pleasure as his head slipped past her vagina's entrance, widening her narrow hole to accommodate the rest of his engorged length inside of her. Naruto, on the other hand, grunted at how tightly she was gripping him, it was like with every inch that he introduced into her velvet tunnel, she only tightened further to the point that he could only get about an inch inside of her every minute, that was why when the head of his cock finally pressed against the entrance to her womb, they both moaned in unified satisfaction. Once he felt her cunt start to loosen up for him, Naruto started dragging Kaneko up and down on top of his dick, he maintained that slow and steady rhythm for a while, making sure that she was accustomed to his girth before he increased the tempo, slowly at first before speeding up to the point that wet claps filled the otherwise quiet dojo. Oh my satan, Naruto! Kaneko cried as her petite ass clapped off his hips, his cock stretching out her insides and rearranging her guts with every one of his upward thrusts, she was riding him with her hands on his chest, every now and then stopping to grind against his crotch in circular motions that scraped at her insides in a toe-curling way. Natural lubricant covered Naruto's crotch and abdomen from how wet Kaneko had gotten, her pussy constantly coming as his cock did its best to split her in two, he never let up though, bringing her to climax after climax until her brain was cloudy before finally pausing, giving the near comatose and sweat-covered girl a chance to regain her sanity. Of course, this wasn't the end since he had yet to reach his own peak and Kaneko whimpered as he told her so by picking her up while she was still connected to him. Kneeling, Naruto flipped her on his dick, getting a light purr from the maneuver, and put her on the mat beneath him so that she was in the infamous face-down ass-up position, this let him have easier access to her cunt, something that Kaneko quickly picked up on if the unconscious thrusting of her ass back against him meant anything. Grabbing a hold of her hips, Naruto groaned in pleasure as her cunt opened up for him much easier than before as instead of constricting around his length and doing its best to keep him out, her tunnel now felt like a smooth glove that was made to fit his cock perfectly, and when he pulled back to start the process over again, it was to the feeling of her walls doing their best to suck him back in. This sequence continued for the next couple of minutes, Naruto languidly moved back and forth, the sound of their hips clapping against one another reverberating through the empty room whilst his balls swung and steadily slapped against her clit sending stars through her vision. But while it felt good, great even to be ed like this, Kaneko knew it could feel even better and all it would take was for Naruto to go faster, she begged. Naruto grinned savagely at that, not one to disappoint, he instantly began speeding up his thrusts, his cock, coated in her constant release was pistoning in and out of her quaking body her body, lithe and petite, yet still retaining curves in all the right places bounced and jiggled lightly as he slammed into her from behind. The only sound that could come from Kaneko's mouth at that point was a long, drawn-out moan, her mind had turned to jello and her heart could be compared to that of a racehorse with how hard it was pumping blood through her veins, if asked, she probably couldn't even give an answer to what her own name was at the moment. Despite all that, she still held on to that last bit of consciousness that anchored her in reality, Kaneko promised herself that she wouldn't pass out, not so long as she was the tank of her peerage, the famous rook piece, it would be a disgrace, not only to herself but to her king that had taken her in if she lost to UAL pleasure. Sadly her body would not agree with her sentiments, feeling the metaphorical spring inside of her core coiling up for another uncontrollable release, Kaneko grit her teeth and held back as well as she could, 
she amended her earlier promise to not pass out. This time it would be so until she had received her prize, to beat the man that stole her mind and body from her king with just his scent at his own game once again. Ignoring all her previous orgasms would be the ultimate victory. Unaware of the mental battle his current partner was undergoing, Naruto grunted as he felt Kaneko's cunt start to spasm around his member, signaling the start of another one of her intense climaxes. A tingling in his balls reminded him that had been holding back his own release for quite some time, and with the feeling of her walls massaging his cock to coax out his load, it was getting very hard for him to continue doing so. That is until he decided not to hold back anymore, raising his hips till he was drilling down into her. Naruto pounded into Kaneko's smaller form, jackhammering into her while she clawed into the mats beneath them with her sharpened fingernails. Doing her best to push back into his thrusts, the Ed's stupid Nekosho let out lewd cries and moans that resembled a cat's nya as she was quickly brought to the edge of climax, right before she fell over the cliff on her own though, the deep and gravelly sound of Naruto groaning right above her entered her ears along with the vibrations of his body as he lay on her back, mounting her like an animal and piercing into her unprotected womb with his angrily pulsating cock. Kaneko idly remembered the amount he had come down her throat when Shed given him a blowjob earlier, images of little white-haired, whiskered children running around, surrounding her as they played filled her mind the millisecond before she heard him begin to grunt. Fuick. Shit Kaneko. I am coming gg. He roared before a flood of steaming hot, potent semen came rushing inside of her, filling her up completely to the point it flowed back and squirted out of the seal his cock had created. Kaneko moaned in completion as this was the prize she had been waiting for, the warmth in her core was like a bomb to her exhausted mind calming her and setting her frazzled mind at ease, and if it wasn't for the low birth rates that devils had, Kaneko was sure that she'd be pregnant ten times over. Falling back into the embrace of his muscular arms as he rolled them over, Kaneko finally allowed herself to relax and simply bask in the comforting effect his aroma had over her now that she'd finally done what she should have done a while ago. Her goal had been met and she could now say with confidence that she'd defeated her scented adversary. In a clearing behind the old school building, Surrounded by thick forestry on all sides, the sounds of metal clashing on metal resounded, the noise saturated the otherwise quiet area and caused surrounding wildlife to flee away from its source. Above the field, blocked by the canopy of trees, the hot summer sun shone down upon the land with its brilliant light, everyone not lucky enough to be inside, forcing them to endure the hot summer heat cursed those that were, one such person was the red-headed playboy otherwise known as Naruto Uzumaki. Per his fiancée's wishes, instead of relaxing under the covers of their bed and blasting the A.C. till the room's air was comparable to that of the Arctic's, he was outside suffering in the heat and humidity of one of the human world's worst seasons, his clothes were starting to stick to his body for Satan's sake, the worst part of it all was that Naruto knew she was doing the very thing he wished he could at the moment. Lifting his arm, he idly blocked a blade that was inches from slashing his face. The action bringing his focus back to who it was that he was locked in battle with in the first place, with her face set in concentration, Naruto watched Rias' newly recruited blue-haired knight, Xenovia, as she continuously attempted to strike him down with a flurry of different strikes, a smirk rested on his face for the sole reason that he knew it annoyed her and if he had to suffer, had make sure he at least got some entertainment out of it. After the whole debacle in which Kokabiel had tried restarting the Great War, Xenovia had approached Naruto in hopes of getting him to spar with her, she had cited the strength that Shed witnessed when he single-handedly took apart the fallen angel Kadri as the main reason, if she sparred with someone of his level, her own would surely rise from the experience, sadly, what Xenovia did not account for was just who he was and there was no one to blame for that as Shed only met the redhead less than a week before then. Unsurprisingly, Naruto had declined, in his mind, there had been no way he would waste any of the free time that he had to relax to help someone do something that they could just as easily ask of someone else. Unfortunately though, somehow Rias had found out which led to her, and in turn, both Akino and Sova, threatening a ban on any bedroom or other activities if he didn't, they even had the audacity to tell him that it would be good for him since Head, in their unwanted opinions though mainly Sona's, lazed about enough for the year. They'd practically called him lazy, him, Naruto Uzumaki, the very same guy that fought a cadre all by his lonesome while the rest of them only had to deal with some unruly mutts, it was honestly just unbelievable how unappreciative they were. That didn't matter now though, as here he was, unwillingly stuck outside in the blistering heat, sparring with the blue-haired knight while doing his best not to injure the girl, 
A few bruises were fine but Naruto knew that if he did any worse, his kind and caring and quite hypocritical if he were asked fiancé would scold him for going too hard on her, it was like she didn't want her peerage to be strong or something. Even now, Naruto could remember the days when he went back to his room, covered in injuries after training with his mother, the small love taps he was giving Xenovia were nothing in comparison. Of course, it wasn't like they could force him to do something that he didn't want to, while it was true that he would rather be lazing about instead of being outside in the heat, that was only because there was nothing else for him to do in the human world, for a devil that learned things many times faster than humans and who also couldn't enjoy the adrenaline rushing thrills that humans enjoyed as it would only be a mundane experience, it was quite boring. Maybe if battles like the one with Kokebeel happened more often then he would be able to at least tolerate the in-between monotony but so far things like that were seeming like they'd be few and far between, at this point. Naruto would even accept having to deal with small tasks like when they took care of the fallen angel infestation in the abandoned church, that at least would beat the dullness of just constantly repeating the same lackluster day, over and over again. So doing something like this, sparring with the former agent of the church, while it wasn't the greatest because of the difference in their strength, was at least more stimulating than closing his eyes all day long in hopes of time skipping to the time they would finally be going back to the underworld as he dodged another straight thrust towards his midsection from Xenovia much to her growing frustration, an idea popped into his head that would benefit both of them. Not wanting to waste any time enacting the said idea, Naruto quickly slipped past the next wide swing Xenovia attacked him with and instantly followed it up to not let her recover, slamming the butt of his sword into her overextended wrist, he used the moment he knew she would wince in pain and loosen the grip she had on her sword to disarm her sending her blade out of reach and stopping any further actions she would take with his own, pressed flat-sided, against her jugular. Gritting her teeth in anger at being so easily bested in her most prized skill once again, by someone who didn't even use a blade mind you, Xenovia was about to surrender when Naruto's next words and actions stopped her in her tracks. Enough with these childish toys, Naruto said as he tossed his own sword behind him, the blade piercing into the ground almost to the hilt, what do you say we up the ante a bit, yeah? Bring out Durandal. I want to see if you can even use that thing correctly, he taunted her with a grin pulling on his whiskered cheeks. So far, they had been using swords that Kiba had made for them but Naruto knew that in doing so, there was pretty much a limit on just how well she could perform. Thinking on this, he came to the conclusion that there was a very easy and obvious solution that either he, or they, had both looked over and that was the Holy Blade just a quick summoning away for the newly reincarnated swordswoman. Of course, there was the inherent danger such a blade posed to Naruto, but he quickly rationalized it as a needed danger to spice things up and maybe, just maybe, make it just that tiny bit more challenging. Xenovia's eyes narrowed in anger upon hearing his taunt but otherwise didn't react, she reasoned that if he wanted to die an early death, it wasn't her fault, though she did make an effort to question him on the fact that he didn't have a sword himself, completely disregarding the one he had tossed behind himself as while it was of fine quality it would stand no chance against a blade like Durandal. Infuriatingly cocky as he always was, Naruto only offered her a shrug and said one sentence that drew even further ire onto himself from Xenovia. Don't worry, these two will be all I need for whatever you throw at me, he said with a small smirk, his fists raised in a classic MMA stance. Xenovia silently vowed to remove the smirk from his face in their next bout as she raised her hand out beside her at shoulder height, at first, it looked like she was doing nothing but grasping at air. A moment later, however, a golden magic circle appeared by her side, and from it came the holy sword Durandal in all its demonic killing glory. Once it was in her grasp, Xenovia made no effort to hide just what exactly her goal was, charging him head on, intent on cutting the smug redhead down a peg or two, she somehow forgot all the times that had put her on her ass the past few days, not to mention how easily had defeated someone many times stronger than her current self. Still, she continued her charge and the spar continued on in much the same way as it had before, the only difference was now Naruto was adding an even more offense from his side. Xenovia grimaced as each hit of his felt like they were about to pierce through her body, swinging her sword in hopes of slashing him while he was close, she wasn't prepared for him to simply bat it away on the flat side of the blade and continue raining blows down upon her sore body. They continued like this, with Naruto dominating the fight despite his clear disadvantage. Eventually, though, he could tell that Xenocha had reached her limit and so stepping back as she did another of her signature wild swings at him, he stepped back just enough for her sword to smash into the ground, just before she could pull the sword from the ground, 
Naruto stopped her with a well-placed punch to her sternum, taking nearly every ounce of air from her lungs and causing her to go practically limp on the ground. That's enough, if we went any further than this it would be pointless, Naruto called the spar off, telling her to rest and recover. I I can still fight, Zenovia tried to reason despite the large gasps of air she was struggling to take. Even if you can, I refuse to fight someone who's on the verge of passing out, so go home, heal, and well continue this tomorrow, understood? He asked her firmly. Reluctantly, Zenovia agreed, albeit silently as most of her focus went to getting air in her lungs again. The next day was much like the last, they sparred, though with her now using Durandal, and just like the previous day, they continued until she couldn't move. They kept this schedule going, sparring every day until Zenovia could no longer continue, it was only thanks to Rias Bishop's healing that they could even think to keep doing this. One day though, Naruto noticed something different, Zenovia seemed to be distracted, about what? He had no clue, nor did he really care, watching as she paused in the middle of their spar, an eyebrow rose on his face as she put her sword down by her side before looking straight into his eyes. Naruto Uzumaki, I wish to ask you a favor, she spoke in her normal deadpan, confusing Naruto. Huh. What do you need? He asked while looking at her curiously, many possibilities ran through his mind as to what it is she could want from him, everything he thought of, however, couldn't prepare him for what she said next. Will you make babies with me? Zenovia asked him, her voice still completely devoid of any fluctuations, stunning Naruto into silence at just how plainly she said it. Mind you, as surprising as it might seem, it wasn't every day that someone asked to bear his children, there was the fact that with every girl that he engaged in intercourse with, it was always without protection, but that was different, Naruto and the girls he slept with understood that there was little to no chance of him impregnating any of them. Now here was a girl, asking him to do exactly that, Naruto doubted Zenovia even knew about their species low fertility rates and so it fell upon him to inform her, but first, he had to ask why. It's not like he wasn't willing, there wasn't a day in hell hey that Naruto would ever decline the offer of with a beautiful woman, but he also couldn't contain his curiosity as to how she decided he was the one for the task. Because of your strength, Zenovia replied instantly as if Shed expected that question, during the battle against Kokabiel, I witnessed your incredible and indomitable power and decided that you would be a perfect mate. Naruto was stumped upon hearing that, asking someone to impregnate you that you've known for less than a month, there was no way she could be serious about something like that, but then, as though reading his mind, she began unbuttoning her corset right in front of the bewildered Uzumaki. Hey now, whoa! He stopped her while waving his hand in the air, albeit with obvious reluctance as he had to decline her offer. While he wasn't against having kids, at the current moment, he had no plans to do so and that wasn't changing any time soon, at least so long as his mother never got wind of it, but that was a whole nother thing entirely. Telling Zenovia as much, Naruto sighed in relief as she seemingly accepted what he said, fixing her unbuttoned clothing and no longer talking about the subject for the rest of the time they spent sparring. Just as was said before, Zenovia didn't bring up the subject of what she wanted from him for the rest of that day, neither did she bring it up throughout their future sparring sessions, no, she decided that instead of being as blunt as she had been before, she would go for a more subtle approach and so her self-imposed seduction mission began. Naruto did well in resisting the temptation at first, keeping his focus solely on their sparring and not paying attention to her obvious but subtle flirtation, he bought himself a couple of days of peace, yet eventually, as any man tasked with dealing with a beautiful woman whose sole goal was to seduce you did, his restraint broke. Zenovia was very attractive to him, there wasn't a millimeter of his brain that could think otherwise, add that into his not-so-secret love for women with exotic hair colors and he didn't stand a chance. So now here they were, locked in a duel of blades with one another but if it were just that, Naruto would be fine, unluckily for him, he also had to deal with the exciting distraction that was the arousing way Zenovia had decided to dress up that day. Instead of the usual outlandish outfit that Shed normally wear for battle that was arousing enough on its own. She was wearing an outfit that had Naruto's pants uncomfortably tight the entire time they were sparring. A tight black athletic tank top that hugged her upper body and showed off her large, perky breasts was the first thing that caught his attention when they first greeted each other that day, that along with the baby blue short shorts that enhanced the already mouth-watering look of her thick thighs and round ass cheeks and Naruto couldn't help himself any further as he gazed at her with a lustful hunger that caused Zenovia to feel a stirring in her core. There wasn't, 
or at least there should nt be, a man on earth that didn't like the view of a beautiful woman with a fine ass in booty shorts. Naruto himself would proclaim to any that asked that he was at the top of that group. Rias and Akino could especially attest to that for him with how many times they've seduced him into either of their rooms for some fun while wearing those types of pants, so after being subject to the seduction of another woman who was just as beautiful as the rest of the women he slept with, it was no surprise when he felt the metaphorical lock on his restraint break into a million pieces, that was without mentioning that she was also practically begging for it. Zenovia was watching as he struggled, smirking internally as she knew that he was mere moments from breaking. Her smugness didn't last as he suddenly appeared right in front of her. A gasp being forced out of her lungs as he slammed her back first against a tree, her eyes instinctively closed from the pain and as she clenched her fists she also noticed that she was no longer holding her sword, moving her arms also proved useless as she realized that her hands had somehow become restrained above her head, almost painfully pressed against the bark by the strong grip of just one of Naruto's hands around her small wrists. Opening her eyes and looking up with a glare painted on her face. Zenovia felt a whimper get caught in her throat as she was captured in his gaze. The pure animalistic hunger glowing in his eyes almost instantly batting her into submission, at that moment, she realized that despite her seduction, despite it feeling like she was the one that had been leading Naruto into falling for her trap, in reality, she wasn't the predator, no, she was the prey, and the powerful Uzumaki was planning on using her to satisfy the ravenous appetite that Shed helped build inside of him. Ah! Zenovia yelped as he dove upon her, burying his face into her neck as he kissed her skin. A blush quickly formed on her face as she realized he was also licking her skin, his lips vibrating on her neck and sending shivers of pleasure down her spine as he hummed at the salty yet sweet taste that hit his taste buds. With her gasps and moans filling the forest's now tranquil air, Zenovia tilted her head to give him more access to the sensitive skin of her neck, she wished she had access to her hands so that she could cradle his head even closer as his teasing pecks and nips were driving her crazy. While he was doing that, he had the other hand that he wasn't using to hold her hands up. On the other side of Zenovia's head, caressing her soft cheek. Occasionally his thumb brushed over her plump lips, with the gasping woman using her tongue to bathe it and the rest of his hand in her saliva whenever it lingered, sometimes Naruto even pushed it into her mouth, to which Zenovia gladly began sucking on his thumb, even going so far as to make lurid noises as though she were giving his finger a lewd and sloppy blowjob, besides, while had very much rather she be giving him the real thing, this was a good enough replacement for the time being. The combination of her scent in his nose, the taste of her skin on his tongue, and the feel of her mouth and tongue on his palm had his pants tightening beyond what could be considered comfortable, he wasn't alone though, as Zenovia felt the crotch of her pants begin to dampen with arousal as she became more and more feverish with her sucking on his finger. Um, Naruto, she moaned his name around the digit in her mouth, while it was happening a bit earlier than Shed expected, Zenovia did not mind her miscalculation as it just meant Shed be getting what she wanted that bit faster. A sudden cry was torn from her throat as she felt him press his knee against her crotch, grinding it against her clothed cunt while pressing their bodies closer together, her breasts were squished against his chest, her top brushing against her hardened nipples since she wasn't wearing a bra underneath while tingles of pleasure went through them with every subtle move either of them made. Zenovia squirmed against his hold on her wrists at the stimulation, desperate to use them to give her twin peaks the pleasure they were asking for. All she ended up doing though was drawing a chuckle of amusement from Naruto at her attempts, their proximity letting her feel and hear the deep and throaty sound rumble throughout her entire body. Naruto then trailed his hand from her face, where she released his thumb with a loud pop, down to her midsection where he reached in between them and groped at her breasts over her shirt, using his pointer finger and thumb he traced and pinched her nipples, their near-diamond hardness poking through the thin material, back and forth, he played with both of her tits equally, all while he still continued to lay kisses against her pale skin. Soon, however, he decided to change it up and so backing away from her neck, he used a small amount of magic to sharpen his nails and transformed her top into pieces of scrap cloth, fully exposing her e-cup-sized breasts and toned stomach, releasing her wrists from his hold so that he could use both of his hands, he brought them to her massive tits and basked in the feel of them in his hands, it was like he was holding two giant marshmallows, that's how soft her tits were. Zenovia's head fell back as he expertly toyed with her breasts, pulling at her nipples and lewdly stretching her tits for his viewing pleasure. Looking up and into her caramel eyes, Naruto could see that she was looking at him with no less lust clouding than he himself felt, if anything, 
Naruto thought she was probably feeling it even more than he was. Then they were upon each other. Their lips tangled and their tongues wrestled for dominance. Muffled moans and random gasps for air filled the space between Naruto and Zenovia as both of their eyes closed in order to fully engross themselves in one another's bodies. Naruto's hands didn't remain idle. Trailing down from her tits to her hips where he grabbed two handfuls of plump ass meat, Zenovia screamed into the kiss as he began manhandling her butt cheeks, attacking her from both above and below, all while his knee continued to drive her closer and closer to her end. She felt as though Shed died and gone to heaven, as impossible as that was, her lust-addled brain couldn't think about the details at that moment, but even though she was already in heaven, it seemed that Naruto wanted to take her even further as he lowered one of his hands even further and locked them around her calf muscle. Opening her eyes, Zenovia only had a moment to see the mischievous glint in Naruto's crimson orbs before he took advantage of her flexibility gained through years of training and folded her leg up and back till her foot rested beside her head against the tree. To make sure that her legs stayed up, he kept his hand on her calf while pressing his body against her to make sure she didn't fall. Zenovia instinctively used her own hands to also hold herself up, wrapping them around the back of his neck as she had an inkling of what was about to happen, if she was correct, then she'd be happy that she decided to support herself in advance. The sound of clothes hitting the floor told the blue-haired beauty that her guess had been right and if the rapid clenching of her vagina said anything, she was extremely aroused at just what that meant. Much like he did with her top, Naruto tore her shorts off. Exposing her moist folds to the open air, then, with a shift of his hips, Zenovia gasped and felt her loins quiver in anticipation as she felt something large and hard press against her entrance. Her caramel orbs were quickly filled with confusion though when instead of the feeling of him filling her up and proceeding to fulfill her wish of being impregnated, she was subject to his playful grin while he ground his cockhead against the lips of her cunt. What? Did you expect something different? Naruto teased her, laughing internally at the look of frustration on her face. That expression quickly changed to one of restrained pleasure as he began grinding against her clit as well, using his free hand to grasp himself at the base and drag his length up and down her sopping labia, she yelped as he slapped it against her slit before shivering as he pulled back till only the head remained. Holding eye contact, Naruto slowly added more and more force to where he was pressed against her until he penetrated into her, taking her virginity and filling her up one inch at a time, he kept going, deeper and deeper until finally, he felt the tip of his dick press against a barrier that he knew was her cervix. Zenovia could only moan as he filled her up completely, his girth stretching out her insides deliciously, there was no pain as her training with the church had long since torn her hymen, that plus how drenched her walls were from how aroused she was and it was no surprise just how easily he slid into her folds. Sitting there for a bit, they both took heavy breaths while Naruto remained still, balls deep inside of Zenovia's cunt, soon though, he couldn't hold back his immense arousal, and honestly, Zenovia was just as bad as him. I am gonna start moving now, yeah? Naruto both asked and told his newest lover, his voice gruff as he did his best to not start outright pounding into her, that would come, but for now, he'd take his time to ease her into it. Zenovia simply nodded, not trusting her voice at that moment, the blue net felt like she was skewered to her throat from how large he was. Upon hearing that, Naruto breathed a mental sigh of relief as he didn't know how much longer he could stay still with such a beautifully tight cunt like Zenovia's contracting around him, shifting his footing so that he could have more leverage, he began slowly sawing in and out of her velvet walls, groaning at the texture and heat her tunnel was surrounding him with. Foo, he paused in his movements and held back a groan, biting down on his lower lip as her womanhood suddenly fluttered around his dick, nearly bringing him to an early orgasm. A deep exhale left his nostrils as she unconsciously continued to massage his engorged length, coaxing out small spurts of precum from his hyper-aroused member every time he bottomed out. Naruto, harder, Zenovia begged him when her need became too much to bear, the slow pace no longer doing enough, she had an itch, deep in her womb, and she wanted, no needed, her red-headed lover to scratch it and there was only one way that she would allow him to do so. Obliging her request, Naruto moved his free hand to rest on the tree beside her head, squaring his hips, and with one last glance down to make sure that she was sure she was the heir to the Uzumaki household slammed himself inside of her before settling into a brutal pace. Zenovia's mouth opened as a silent scream left her throat, it soon turned into a guttural moan, however, as she was subject to every nerve inside her gushing cunt being pummeled mercilessly by the rugged Uzumaki's prodigious cock, shocks of pleasure traveled from her core to her brain 
bringing tears to her eyes as she tried to hold off her orgasm. Miniature explosions still went off in her brain each time his tip kissed her womb. Naruto wasn't pleased to see her holding back at all though as he began grinding his dick against her G-spot, swiveling his hips this way and that. He made sure to attack it from different angles each time he thrust into her. He smirked as he felt Xenovia abruptly lock up beneath him, the release blindsiding her at how sudden it was. Not even for a moment did Naruto let up through it though, making her near insensate as she squirted her love juices onto his crotch because of the additional stimulation. It was after he was certain shed taken enough that he slowed down, but still only just enough so that Xenovia could regain her bearings. NNGH Xenovia moaned and gripped at the hair on the back of his head as he brought his hand down to play with the bundle of nerves that was her clit. The pleasure she got from that was almost painful with how sensitive she was after such an intense orgasm, emphasis on almost as her back arched as much as it could with the way they were positioned as he once again began to piston into her love canal. His hand was no longer assaulting her clit, instead settling on her hip to give him more leverage to her with. A repeating smack resounded in the forest as their crotches rapidly clapped against the others, a lewd combination of their UAL fluids splashing onto the floor each time they collided, soaking the dirt and grass beneath them. Naruto wasn't slowing down this time, not at least until he'd reached his own release, nothing else mattered to him at that moment, over and over he ed into her quivering quim, her thick thighs and round ass rippling with each impact, his thrusting resembled a jackhammer non-stop and never losing any strength as he used her perfect pussy as his own hole to get himself off. Angry grunts left his mouth as he slammed himself to the hilt over and over inside her snug cunt, sweat dripping down his back and soaking his t-shirt as he growled in exertion, soon enough though, he was rewarded for his hard work. Fuick. I, I am coming. Xenovia cried, her climax rapidly approaching from Naruto's perfect technique. Me too. I'm shit. Naruto groaned as he felt her walls clench and unclench around his member, dragging him to climax alongside her, his balls rising and his cock throbbing angrily the closer he got to his release. Inside. She screamed while her hands fell from his neck to his hips to keep him from pulling out. Come inside me, Naruto. Give me everything. Pump me full of your kids. She moaned in his ear, her sultry voice bouncing around in his head as she finally reached the precipice. Naruto couldn't hold back after hearing that and it wasn't like he wanted to in the first place. Here it comes. He clenched his teeth and closed his eyes while planting his hips against her own so that he could be as deep inside of her as possible, ensuring not a single drop of his nut escaped. Xenovia let loose the loudest moan as she felt herself fall into the most intense orgasm of their time together as the first wave of Naruto's thick semen shot out of his dick and into her greedy womb, she unconsciously rolled her hips against his milking his cock of every spurt of cum that she could get to ensure the highest chances of pregnancy. Um. The blue-haired woman hummed joyfully with her eyes closed as she felt herself get filled to the brim with his steaming load. Only once Shed ensured that had spilled everything he had inside of her did she finally let loose the grip she had on his hips, her arms falling limply by her sides as they both took deep breaths of air in order to regain their composure. Extracting himself from her folds, Naruto finally allowed her to rest her leg against the ground beside the other, despite that, he still made sure to hold her up as he knew that her last orgasm had taken a lot out of her. Looking down at her, he felt his dick jump as he watched Xenovia contentedly rest one of her hands against her lower belly. Right over where her womb was, she could feel his cum sloshing around inside of her womb with every movement she made and it made her giddy at the thought of it taking root and granting her wish of having a child, some part of her, however hoped that they wouldn't be successful in their first attempt as she wanted to experience the pleasure she just felt more than once, somehow unaware that Naruto would make sure that it wasn't just a one-time thing. Looking up at him and meeting his still hungry eyes, she smiled a little shyly at what she was about to ask him. Don't you think we should do it more than once? Upon seeing his eyes light up with amusement, she quickly continued lest he started teasing her, you know, just to ensure the highest chance of pregnancy, nothing else, she said and looked away. Sure. Let's do it more than once, you know, just to make sure. Naruto's deep voice rumbled in her ear, his tone filled with the very teasing that she had been worried about. Naruto looked around at their surroundings with a frown. First though, let's go ahead and get out of this hot ass forest. I feel like my skin's about to melt off, he told her and grabbed her around the waist, even before she could reply. A magic circle, its color a magnificent silver, appeared underneath them before teleporting them both away to his home leaving the forest to its quiet tranquility once more. Thanks for watching.